Rich Rodriguez enters his seventh season at West Virginia, looking to expand on the national prominence he has helped bring to the Mountaineer football program. Rodriguez has a full arsenal of weapons to help him do so, namely Heisman Trophy candidates Patrick White and Steve Slate, a duo sure to make the Mountaineer offense electrifying once again. Today, they face a talented Western Michigan team that is primed and ready for a major upset. Western Michigan takes on number three, West Virginia, next. Sixty thousand sun-drenched fans are filling up a Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia, for the start of the college football season. The Mountaineers, ranked number three, will saddle up against the Broncos of Western Michigan on a beautiful afternoon here in the hills of West Virginia. I'm John Sanders, along with Renee Nado, number three in the country going in, highest ranking they've ever had in preseason, but certainly well deserved. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, and coaches from coast to coast at every level are trying to duplicate the spread option offense. And what makes it even faster, he runs it from the no huddle. Well, the numbers are awesome for him. Four consecutive New Year's Day bowl games. They've been ranked in the top ten. Won 11 games each of the last two years. So they have been outstanding. Of course, the offense is the key. And it's led by number five and number ten. That's not a nickel-dime tandem, though. As a matter of fact, it's a diamond-studded duo. Quarterback is packed with white. Which casting the Sundance Kid, Batman and Robin, call it what you will, but they are a dynamic duo. Patrick White is the Big East Player of the Year, 15-2 as a starter, and he's also the career-leading rusher among quarterbacks in the Big East. And you say that, Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick have played here, but he's become more of an accomplished passer. Well, he's done his share, and the guy who was hurt much of last year really played one-handed, left-handed, off-season wrist surgery. He's 100% now, Steve Slayton. Arguably the fastest running back in the country and the most dangerous perhaps. He had 15 100 yard performances, 300 200 yard games. He also was the uh, 204 yards in the Sugar Bowl and it was an MVP in that game. Well, of course, they average over 300 yards a game rushing, but the Bronco defense is pretty good against the rush. As a matter of fact, they were one of the better teams in the country last year. Won eight games, beat Virginia, played tough against Florida State and Cincinnati, so they're pretty good. The 11th ranked defense in the entire country. 46 sacks, 22 interceptions. They've done a great job. Bill Cubitt took this team over 1-10 in 2004, 15-9 since then. And the defensive back is Louis Delmas. He had four of those interceptions. He's a real speed burner back there defensively. From Miami Beach, and Bill Miller knows him pretty well. 4-5 speed. He plays free safety, John, but he be, can play cornerback with the speed he has. You have to scheme offensively when you play against him. And he talked about the kind of abilities he has. Ed Reed and Reggie Nelson, that's the kind of talent he has. Well, we'll see what he can do against that outstanding West Virginia offense. The Mountaineers set to open their chase for a national championship. We'll be back with more, including the opening kickoff from Morgantown, right after this. Prior to the football game, walking over here, and his Tom Tomzik is the referee. We'll be hearing from him during the course of the afternoon. That's Brandon West, the deep man for the Broncos, a team that won eight games a year ago and put up a stiff battle in the International Bowl in Toronto against Cincinnati. And they're very familiar with the Big East. Bill Miller and, of course, Bill Cubitt were also assistants in the Big East earlier in their career. This one will start inside and will not come out. So McAfee kicks it into the end zone. West takes a knee, and we're about set to see this offense come out. Tim Hiller will be the quarterback, replacing the coach's son, Ryan Cubitt, who he coached for a couple of years. He'll be the starting quarterback for Western Michigan, a guy that played two years ago and then suffered a knee injury and had to rehab all of last year. But he did start seven games or played in seven games two years ago as a true freshman. And now as a redshirt sophomore after the injury rehab, he gets the call. It'll be interesting to see because they had the experience of Ryan Cubitt. Now they turn it over to Tim Hiller. And four wide receivers to the right, no backs, the quick toss. And the Mountaineers are all over it. The pass was to Julian, and let's take a look at the rest of this lineup for Western Michigan offensively. The one guy you might want to keep a lot, an, an eye on is Schneider Julian. He's a junior, and his coach sometimes inverts his name backwards and forwards, so they just call him Spider. But he's got plenty of speed, and he's a guy that can do, go deep. A loss of three on the first play. There is the offensive line. Crutella is certainly a veteran in the middle, but they did lose a outstanding guard in Dominic Moran, and we'll see if Philip Swanson can fill that slot. This time they go with the one setback, and time called by Hiller. Hiller did not like what he saw, so he calls time. He had Brandon West behind him in the backfield, 
and they're going to take an early timeout. That's not a real good sign, but it is the first game. And that was an interesting first call. In fact, when they try to test the West Virginia defense, which really was a paltry 109 in uh, in that department in the NCAA last year. But you know, West Virginia is going to confuse. They're going to load the box, which they just did, and try to force them to pass the ball. They are the defensive down linemen for the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Of course, they were much maligned for their pass defense, which was 109th out of 119 teams in the country. But they have four new backs in there this year and maybe the key is right there in the middle number 46 Ryan Monday a fifth year senior who played three years 18 starts at Michigan and because of an NCAA rule he was able to transfer and play right away so he moves into the starting role for Rich Rodriguez no score 14 19 to play we're just underway second down and 13 On the option, the toss comes to West, and he'll get back to the 15, and that's it. Ryan Monday, the young man we just talked about, led the charge defensively for West Virginia. They'll lose two more, and it goes back to the 15. It'll be third down and 15. And the coach, Bill Cubitt, in his third year, you mentioned, Renee, what a great job he's done. He was a longtime assistant. One time was an assistant at Western Michigan. He also was an assistant at Rutgers, so he's familiar with West Virginia and this stadium and the Big East. And he came here as the offensive coordinator for Rutgers in 2001, and West Virginia laid an 80-7 win on him. I think you remember that one. Absolutely. You would, wouldn't you? <laughs> Just about two and a half minutes gone out of the shotgun. Hiller rolling right, looking, still looking, throws, and he's going to overthrow everybody. Nobody open. It was intended for Julian, but good coverage downfield, so it's three and out for the visitors, the Broncos. And this, I think, is one of the things they feared coming in, Renee, is that they would get in trouble early and the Mountaineers might strike quickly. That's one thing they're going to try to avoid under Bill Miller. I think West Virginia won the first battle on defense. They confused. They loaded the box. And Hiller, who was the MAC freshman of the year, pretty cerebral guy, a 4.0 GPA, uh, really didn't see what he liked there. And, and uh, West Virginia wins the first battle. Now we'll get in pretty good field position. Vaughn Rivers will be back to receive the punt of Jim Laney. And it gets it away from about the five yard line. Devon Rivers backpedals inside the 30. Cuts to his left at the 40 and he's nailed as he gets to about the 40 yard line and that's where the Rattners will have it. Pretty good field position. 56 yard punt, a good punt, an 11 yard return and there is Pat White. What a great job he has done in his time here in Morgantown. He is a redshirt junior and he is Mr. Do Everything. The numbers are just incredible. As you mentioned, some of the great running quarterbacks have been in this league, and he has surpassed all of them. And, you know, they have the regular tempo, the Indy tempo, and the jet tempo as far as no huddle offense. This must be the jet tempo right here. Well, they'll play as fast as the officials will let them play, starting at the 41-yard line, their own 41. Pretty good field position going out of the shotgun. And there's the quick pass outside to Devine. And Loud picks it up inside the 50 to the 45. Darius Raynaud, a 12-yard pickup for a first down. Check the other backs and receivers for this offense of West Virginia. But you have to keep your, mind, your eye on one guy by the name of Owen Schmidt. That's the offensive line. They're doing a great job. There is one change along there from what we had thought earlier in the year. They made a change in the guard position, moving Hayes into the start. First and 10. Ball is at the 46-yard line of the Broncos. Inside handoff. Slayton squeezes at the 40, and he's dragged down from behind by Dustin Duclo. Eight-yard pickup. The rest of the defense for the Broncos. You see this group, and they have been terrific. And even though as good as they were, they have made some changes. They'll play a lot of five defensive back coverage, and they'll probably also play a lot of man coverage. Pretty good speed by Biggers. We've talked about Delmas. It is second down and a couple. Ball at the 38-yard line. Working strictly out of the shotgun. White with his first run, and he's dragged down short of the first down. The tackle again made by Delmas. That's his second hit in a row. And no gain, so it'll be third and two. 
And Delmas Phil is pretty good. We talked about him. He's a big time hitter, but he's playing close to the line. And you know, Patrick White, what makes this offense go, John, is that he reads so well. It's a triple option, basically. He can run, hand it to Slayton or another bat, or he can pass it. And you may see a little bit of his arm strength today. And you'll also see a lot of Jock Sanders and Noel, Noel Devine. Boy, what great numbers he had coming out of Florida. Inside handoff. Schmidt, I don't know that he's going to make it. Schmidt will line up at tight end. He'll line up at fullback. We saw him line up at tailback. They'll split him out at times. But that time, Corey Flom was there defensively, and it's fourth and short. Inside handoff to Schmidt is running behind the inside zone play, and good fill by the inside guy. And, and you know, it's short, but he's going to go for it. Rich Rodriguez is very confident this will make a statement right here. Well, the no backfield offense, four wide outs, two left, two right, and that usually means this guy's going to carry, and he does. He's dragged down as he gets on inside the 30, and they are wearing Lewis Delmas out already in that defensive secondary. First down, Mountaineers 10 yard pickup. Good blocking up front, and you know, the West Virginia offense is probably Probably one of the best zone blocking offenses in the nation. Good blocking there, a gaping hole. They subscribe to the Denver Bronco way of blocking up front, and you don't need to be real big, just real smart, real quick. And there's a lot of running as far as offensive line play is concerned. It's another first and ten. The ball is just inside the 28-yard line. The fake of the handoff, and White showing his speed somehow gets away and gets inside the 20 before he's dropped by Fryer and Delmas. So those guys in the secondary are going to make a lot of tackles this afternoon. And the bad thing, you know, you don't want your safety being a leading tackler. Delmas has 53 stops last year, but uh, he's getting a lot of work as Delmas comes up, and that's bringing him close, sucking him close to the line of scrimmage. You see him good play there, but again, you don't want your safety playing that close, making tackles. It opens up to all the middle for slants and patterns such as that. Seven-yard pickup, second down three. All the offense has been on the ground so far, and the motion man that time is Raynaud. And tumbling down just at the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Corey Flom inside defensively for the Broncos, and also some good play stuffing the middle from Nick the Catapane doing a good job. You know, Pat White is only 6'2", 185, but uh, he's a lot stronger than he appears quick. A 4'4", 140, no quarterback is that quick in the country. It is still third down and three. They're changing the play. They go on the fly a lot, working strictly out of the shotgun so far. This is going to be the first pass, and it's a dandy. Touchdown, West Virginia. Making the catch is Dorel Jala. Great slant route, and he was wide open over the middle. And we talked about that. When you get your safeties up close to the line, they've been sucking them up. Delmas has been playing close to the line. They open up the middle. The corner cannot cover that slant pattern, and that was really set up well. 20-yard touchdown play. Patrick White, good pass protection, just throws it right where it needs. Great separation for the cornerback. Steven did the best he could, but Jala with the touchdown catch. Early score here, 9.35 in the first quarter. McAfee for the extra point out of the hold of Jeremy Cash. Long snapper is Adam Hughes. He puts it up and he puts it through. So West Virginia scores quickly on their first possession. And that's another thing that the Western Mission coaches were worried about. Would they score quickly? They certainly did. 59 yards, 8 plays, 341 on the clock. And West Virginia, on the touchdown pass, takes the lead over Western Michigan. And welcome back to West Virginia with an opening drive. Eight plays, 59 yards, and you can see Patrick White has set this up with the running play and sucking up the free safety. Now it opens up the slant pattern wide open to Jala for the score at uh, the 9.35 mark. West Virginia on the scoreboard leading 7-0 over Western Michigan. And officially a 19-yard touchdown pass. So once again, it'll be Pat McAfee to kick off. And Brandon West is the deep man. West handled the opening kickoff but did not bring it out because McAfee put it about three yards deep in the end zone. So the kind of start the 60,000 dressed in old gold and blue wanted to see. And this one is going to be out of bounds. So a better field position coming up. Flag of the play. As he kicks it out. So that'll be a better start for the Broncos, and let's we'll see how they can do on their second possession. We mentioned that Ryan Cubitt, the coach's son, was the quarterback here, and they were a little concerned because of the fact that Hiller 
with the knee injury didn't play at all last year. So they also have uh, Thomas Peregrine and Drew Birdie. And but Birdie has you a got high ankle sprain. The ball we placed the ball on the 35-yard line. First down. First down. All right, Tom. Thank you. The thing they like about Hiller, though, John, is that they like his moxie. You know, he was a 2005 Mac freshman of the year. And he's a, he's a good sized guy. 6'5, 228, a strong arm, 65% of his tosses, and uh, 200 touch, 200, uh, may make that 20 touchdown tosses a couple of games, and that was just in five games. But, you know, the thing in this offense, they think the quarterback, whoever it is, 65%, 25 touchdowns should be the norm. West is the lone setback. He's got the football. And he's got about two or three yards. They'll be falling forward for a gain of about five. Williams, who's been bothered by some elbow problems, he was kind of questionable at that middle linebacker spot. Uh, Bobby Hathaway plays behind him. He had a hand injury, so they're a little banged up. He will pick up five on the play, make it second down and five. And that West Virginia defense runs pretty well. The thing is, West Michigan, Western Michigan, their offense is a strength. They block very, very well. One of the best offensive lines in the country. Hiller is the lone man in the backfield, out of the shotgun, looking right, throwing right, completes it. And it's going to be a first down. In, the pass was caught by Herb Martin, and he was wrestled down by Morty Ivey. But it is going to be a first down, the first one for the Broncos this afternoon. They pick up seven. And Magro came from a defensive end position, a linebacker. And Hiller stayed strong in air, found his mark, and a little cushion given on the cornerback by, uh, make that a, a weak linebacker, Morty Ivey with the stop, but that was a good pickup by Hiller on that blitz and that coverage. Well, you know the uh, defense of West Virginia much maligned, almost getting to the quarterback. Martin was the intended receiver, but it was a big hit coming up the middle, and it's going to be a combination of things, though, I think. They were all over the secondary, so they changed four of the five players back there but you still got to get help from the guys up front to make it happen. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is they didn't have any kind of pass rush. So, you know, Rich Rodriguez talked about they're going to disguise things. You may see a three-man front, sometimes a four-man up front, but uh, they're going to move guys around. And again, they run so well, but they were rated so low in pass defense that they had to make some improvements, and I think they have the people to do that. And that's the inside handoff to Glenn Thomas, and Thomas will get to about the 50. He'll pick up a couple, and that is all, giving three on the play. You see the clock at 8.26 to play, nearing the midway point of the first quarter. Mountaineers have had the ball once, and they have scored on that possession. Johnny Holmes checking in as they change some of those defensive backs. They'll bring in an extra defensive back, obviously, now that they're in a certain passing situation of third down and eight. And this is what the Broncos do not want to find themselves in third and long. They're really there. Their bread and butter is the running. And when they have to pass the ball, and West Virginia knows, you, you'd expect a blitz here, and we'll see how Hillary reacts to it. Miller going up, maybe changing the count at the line of scrimmage. Mountaineer fans trying to make some noise. Gets the pass away. It's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted that time by Wicks. Eric Wicks, number 41, almost picked that one off, and he would have been gone. Hiller throwing into zone coverage, and Wicks steps right in front. I think Hiller just forced this ball a little low trajectory. He's lucky they went kicking the extra point, but Wicks, I don't think he saw Wicks. He saw the receiver open for a second, waited a little too long, and, and just tried to, to hurry the throw. Jim Laney will punt. Vaughn Rivers is back again for the Mountaineers, this time back near his 10-yard line. So one first down on that possession. Very nice kick. They run away from it. This is going to be a good spot for the defense of the Broncos as they let it trickle down to about the two-yard line. 48-yard kick. No return, obviously. The Mountaineers have the lead. White and company set to come back on. They scored on their first possession. They've got 97 yards to go when we come back. All smiles so far on a sunny Saturday in Morgantown. The Mountaineers lead it 7 to nothing midway point of the first half. They are starting deep in their own hole, and Schmidt is at the fullback spot right now, and we'll keep an eye on number 35 because Schmidt moves all over the place. Right now lined up as a true fullback in the I formation, and this is the first time, I think, that we've seen Patrick White under center. Slayton knife down as he gets to about the four-yard line. He'll pick up a yard, maybe two. 
Not much there at all. We talked about that defensive play. Pritchard made the tackle, but this is a pretty good defense for the Broncos with Davidson, the Catapane, Cielinski or Flom in the front along with Marshall. They're the best in the MAC. Best defense in the MAC. Second down play. They're going to throw. Deep down the middle. Raynaud makes the catch. He's at the 50 to 40. He loses the football. Biggers picks it up, and it's going to go over to the Broncos. So a great play ends with a turnover by West Virginia. Great read by Pat White. Saw Raynaud got beyond the coverage, and the safety cannot allow him to get behind there. Step back in good protection. Raynaud just got behind the cornerback. No safety there to help. And he's off to the races until someone strips the ball. Biggers comes up with it. Good strip there by C.J. Wilson. And Biggers comes up with it. Big play as Wilson finds his mark. Raynaud as the free safety made a, a play for it. But just cannot allow any wide receiver to get behind you. And they're lucky they get the ball here. But Western Michigan defense comes up with a big, huge play. And now have pretty good field position. Dodge a bullet. Let's see what they can do with it on their third possession of the first half. It wipes out a 58-yard pass play. That would have put the Mountaineers in good field position. A little flea flicker action here. Wide open to making the catch down the middle. So that's a good pickup there for the Broncos. They hit number 27, Jamarco Simmons. And Jamarco Simmons is a guy, you know, he's... He causes some mismatches with some great size, 6'2", 234, 61 grabs last year. But this free flicker kind of confused West Virginia just a little bit, allowed Simmons to come unattended on a crossing pattern. Done in the fastest guy, but very effective. He moves those chains. Well, they get it inside the 35 to the 34, a 31-yard gain, and this time it's West on the sweep trying to get outside. Knife down as he gets to the 27. Williams in there to lead the way, along with Rivers. Tackle by 47. Seven Wait. yards, though, on the carry. And they're beginning to move it a little better off on offense. Kind of a slow start as they were three and out in their first possession. Probably some of those opening game big crowd jitters, you know? Well, and I think the last two plays, John, were very confidence-boosting plays to the West West Michigan uh, offense because the play the Simmons and now this running play. We talked about the offensive line blocked so well. Kind of screened off and allowed the running back to get to the outside for a nice game. Just over six minutes to play. Hiller is under center. And the quick out pass once again to DeMarco Simmons. He is ridden out of bounds along that near sideline. Ivy did the job defensively, but it's an eight-yard pickup. And they continue to march deep into West Virginia territory. And you know, you look back, Renee, at all the points the Mountaineers gave up the last six games of the season. That is certainly a concern for this coaching staff. Yeah, and, and it didn't end on a good note, although the bowl game was successful. But the last part of the season, the defense gave up a ton of points. Uh, and, and right now, West Virginia, Western Michigan is moving down with a lot of confidence. And uh, they got a nice drive going here following that turnover. Just outside the 20, first and 10. West tries to go inside, and there's not much there. Zero on the play, and it's Mark Magro from Morgantown, West Virginia. You know, you touched a little bit earlier on the, the walk-on situation here. And, of course, Rich Rodriguez himself was a walk-on. Owen Schmidt was a walk-on after he played at a very small college for a year and then came here and earned his way. And it's, it's amazing what they've been able to do with that program here. 26 walk-ons have been awarded scholarships in the last five years. And that, that rewards a guy for hard work. you got some superstars blended in with some blue-collar guys. It's a nice blend here for the Mountaineers. Drop, picked up, pressure. And the, pad is caught, uh, the pass is caught right at the 20 by Ledbetter, a good tight end. He took a shot from Reed, and that may be what the penalty is about. Reed might have gotten there just a little bit too quickly. Hiller made chicken salad out of that play, and, yes. and, and he, a nice diving catch by Ledbetter, the tight end. On the defense, number 47, ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. It'll be a first down because of the penalty, and that's the good news for the Broncos. Well, Ledbetter is a good red zone kind of guy, a short yardage guy, 6'5", 230, but he's more of a receiving tight end than a blocking tight end. He had nine grabs for 101 yards against Miami last year, so he's a dangerous receiver. You have to respect him. A lone setback is West. Ledbetter is a candidate for the Mackey Award and the Brandon Award. Looking, lofting toward the end zone, incomplete. Intended again for Jamarco Simmons. West Virginia had that one well covered. 
Ball is incomplete. Antonio Lewis back there. Now that's a surprise because he had a shoulder injury. Antonio we didn't Lewis. think he was going to play. When they try to get into a mismatch. We said that Jamarcus Simmons is a big kind of guy. It reminds you of a Marcus Colston from the New Orleans Saints. Going that fade pattern, he tries to just use his size and good defensive effort. Calls for a second down, but Simmons, that was a good good try anyway with Simmons was a, a primary target there. West and Thompson are split out of the shotgun. The inside handoff and down to about the 14-yard line is Glennis Thompson. He's out of West Palm Beach. Both these teams, as Williams made the tackle, have a lot of players from Southern Florida. A lot of them, you know. <laughs> We talked about Rich Rodriguez has 20 and, and uh, Western Michigan has 22. You recruit there, most of them from Miami area, uh, you know, and that's the hotbed of, of blue chip recruiting. So uh, you brought him up here, and when you put that Florida kit out here in this turf, you got a lot of speed on the field. You certainly do. Now they'll use a five receiver formation on third down and seven. And there's the quick out. The pass is complete to Martin. And he swings it into the end zone, so that play worked beautifully. Martin to Simmons. How about that for a little razzle-dazzle? That certainly caught West Virginia by surprise. Yes, it did. You can't prepare for a play like that. 15-yard touchdown pass. And for the extra point, a chance to tie this ball game up. Just a good play by Hiller. Throws it out to wide receiver Martin, who can catch pretty well. Throws his, the southpaw style. Unattended. And that is a great play drawn up by Bill Cubitt. Puts the Broncos on the scoreboard. Well, Jamarco Simmons was wide open because they were coming up to make the tackle on the first receiver. And now the left-footed kicking Mike Jones will put it up and miss. So that's costly for the special teams. There is a flag down, though. We'll await that ruling. Now, we had been told all week that Antonio Lewis had a shoulder injury and would not play. <laughs> and here he is. So you never know. Game time, John, you know, it's blood starts circulating a little bit. The juices start flowing. Legal block. Legal block. 97. 97. On the defense. On the defense. Half, the Half the distance to the goal. We play the try. Well, a costly penalty to the Mountaineers there after the miss of the Correction. extra point. 96. Well, that's the call. The illegal block. Called on Killeen Dykes. And give him another chance at it. So Mike Jones will get a second crack at it. Jim Laney, the holder. Tom Harrington is the snapper. Trying to tie it up here. Late in the first quarter. And he just does. No, he did not. He missed again. My goodness. That was not a very good effort there for the Broncos. So it's a 7-6 game. The Broncos get on the board with 4-12 remaining here in the opening quarter of play. A little razzle-dazzle by the Broncos gets them on the board and back in the football game. We'll be back as well. A little Bronco razzle-dazzle with 4-12 to play. They get on the scoreboard and not in the normal way, Renee. Hiller to Martin to Simmons and Martin uh, normally a wide receiver. Sucked everyone in with that pass from Hiller, and uh, this, uh, Jamarco Simmons accepts the pass from Martin for the touchdown. A little trickery, if you will, but uh, extra point was not good, so uh, Western Michigan finds himself in a one-point deficit. Well, the first quarter has usually been a quarter in which the Mountaineers have dominated. They outscored the opposition 111-51 to 51 in the first quarter last year. Of course, a lot of times they did have to fight their way back, as they did in the bowl game. Well, you know, it'll be Mike, Mike Jones, Jones to kick off. Keep in mind, too, that uh, the defense gave up a lot of points. And, uh, you know, so right now, the defense is doing pretty solid overall for the West. West I'm very impressed with West Virginia's defense thus far. And now the Rivers, the deep man. And it's going to be a short kick taken at the 30-yard line by Rivers. A little room outside as he gets across the 40, goes out of bounds about the 42-yard line, a 16-yard return. We'll see if the Broncos can continue what has been a pretty good defensive show. Of course, they got a break in that fumble after that 59-yard pass play completion. Looked like the Mountaineers might be driving again, and that changed things around. But to their credit, then they took that ball and took it in for a touchdown. Exactly right. They capitalize on opportunities, and that's what this game is going to be all about for Western Michigan. You have to capitalize on opportunities. Your special teams, which is a vital part of this game, is going to have to be solid. And uh, right now, eh, West, West Virginia is starting in pretty good field position, you know, cutting the field almost in half. At the 42-yard line. Slayton and White in the backfield. 
White with the quick out pass to Reynard. Very close to a first down. Good running, but a flag comes in. Might be a hold there. Pritchard made the tackle, but we'll see what the officials say they saw. Renard with a good job and a nice spin move in there, but somebody was holding, I think. Bubble screen, which is a dangerous play. You know, they look at Pat White and Slayton and Renard. They think they're the most dangerous trio speed-wise in the country. Well, certainly they have a, a wealth of Holy, talent. Holy. Number 12 in the offense. offense. 10-yard penalty. We play first down. So Nate Sowers was the guilty party. Holding, trying to advance him out. He was very close to a first down, and now that's going to be wiped out as the ball will come all the way back. And Owen Schmidt will check in at fullback. Sowers also coming back in the lineup. Schmidt comes out now. Sowers is back in. Eight yards on the pass play, but wiped out by the penalty. And the Broncos are trying to change on the fly. That's tough to do. Good camera work there. Got the penalty. Well, he does get off. No, he did not. The flag goes off. Now, I don't know whether it's for that or for the delay of game. Bergeis was trying to get off the field. And now the officials will huddle and talk it over. Legal substitution on the defense. Five yards from the previous spot remains first down. And I think that's what the, that hurry-up offense sometimes can do to you. Yeah, and you know, we talked about the jet. It could be either a... Uh, uh, you know, a regular tempo, which is, they call it a regular tempo, indie, <laughs> indie tempo, John, which is kind of in the middle, and the jet, which is, you know, full bore ahead. And So you've got a regular car, you've got an indie car, and then you've got a jet. <laughs> that's, that's about <laughs> it. And they run the jet once in a while and catch you off guard, and that's what worked last time. White with it. Gets away from one tackler, gets away from another. Fights his way forward, close to a first down. Austin Pritchard made the tackle for the Broncos. But White. Showing his ability. Picks up eight on the play. Pritchard the tackle. Fake that inside handoff. And you've got two guys with the kind of speed they have back there. It can drive you crazy. And he sucked Marshall in a defensive end on that fake handoff to Slayton. It sucked everybody in, but also credit White with a pair of broken tackles. Great broken field running, picking up a first down. Schmidt is back in there at fullback now. He'll be all over the place. Actually saw him quick kick in practice the other day. 7-6, Mountaineers lead. First quarter winding down. Slayton looking for room, won't get any. Dropped down that time by Bergeis, made the tackle. And Wilson, C.J. Wilson helping out as well, number 26. C.J. Wilson. Losing two on the play, it'll be second down and 12. Right at midfield for West Virginia, trying to get something going. Back on their heels just a little bit after that nice drive following the fumble. That's one of the keys if you're an underdog like Western Michigan, as you said, if you can take advantage of those turnovers. Slayton with it. He's got some room up the middle. Cuts it out to the left side. They're chasing him down. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. 50 yards. And when Slayton got that room in the middle of the field, you could just kiss it goodbye right there. Well, you know, there's a saying that Rich Rodriguez has, when you blitz, Get the instruments ready. We're playing the fight song and kicking the extra point. And, and Western Michigan defense blitzed just now, and, West, and the uh, Mountaineers made it pay for it. He showed that terrific speed. Nobody was going to catch him from behind. So once again, it's Pat McAfee on McAfee. for the extra point. And it is up and true. And the Mountaineers have had three possessions. They've scored on two of them. And after a 59-yard pass play, fumbled on the other possession. So, so far, their offense has really not been stopped. And, you know, the interesting thing is we talk so much about Pat White with running ability. Both the scores have come via the pass. So, a nice throw here. Great blocking wow, downfield. Block that That's a wipeout block. And good, good broken field running here. That's everything worked perfection. And, again... West Virginia made him pay for that blitz package that the Broncos threw in. Good pass protection and just throws it out there and lets him do the rest. And you oh, can that see that was why. a pancake block oh. right there. <laughs> you look at the offensive lineman downfield, though, John. That's just good running and good downfield blocking and sleep. You can see why he's so dangerous and a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. Good pickup. And you see a good feel from the end zone angle. And Slayton just runs away with that 4-3-6 speed, maybe. 
and Darren McFadden may have something to say about it, the fastest running back in the country. That was Figner, by the way, that laid that block on that defender, and Slayton just took advantage of it, motored 50 yards for his first touchdown, 34 in his career. You know, last year, the kind of job he did was unbelievable, even though he played basically with one arm. He did catch two touchdown passes last year, 16 rushing touchdowns a year ago. And that's why he's so valuable, John, because, you know, not only is he a good runner, he blocks pretty well, Slayton does, and he's a good receiver in a slot. So, you know, when he gets to the next level, whenever that is, uh, he's very much like a Marshall Falk. You can do a number of things with him, and he's going to be a dangerous weapon on Sundays. West will take it, drops it at the 1, picks it up at the 20, slips down as he gets across the 20, and is put down there. Defensively, it was Andy Emery who made the tackle, a 19-yard return, and look at those career numbers for touchdowns. And that's pretty impressive per carry, 6.3 yards in points per game. So he's automatic points when he gets his hands on the ball. He can do so much with him, either receiving or running with the ball. And again, he blocks pretty well, and he's a very durable guy. Plays well, and that's also, you talk about him with the good arms now. Last year played the entire season, basically, with one arm. He could only carry the ball in his left hand, which was his off hand. Right. So, to me, that's got to make him even more difficult because he can go either arm now that that wrist surgery was successful. And he can use the arm to block. He gets his hands and protect it. So. West is the lone back. Fake the inside handoff. Hiller has some time. Now the pocket breaks down. He flips it to a receiver. Dykes was there. Brandon West was the receiver who caught the ball. Johnny Holmes as well in on that pressure. Well, he had a lot of time before the pocket collapsed. But they had pressure. Western Michigan offense did a good job as much as possible. But look, they bring the blitz here, and he, they do as much as possible. But just after a while, a pocket collapses, and Hiller just has to do something with it. Just... Woo, get rid of it. But you can see a nice play as West, West Virginia just kept them all bottled up and uh, didn't, didn't let anything happen there. Good play by the, by the Mountain New defense. Minute 45 remaining opening quarter. First, excuse me, second and 13. And there's the little dump off to Ledbetter, the tight end. And he is tripped up and dropped on the play by Williams, Larry Williams. A senior from Highland Springs, Virginia, made the trip up tackle as he came up just short of the original line of scrimmage, but I think we've got a discussion, and it's going to be a clip against the Broncos. And sometimes when you get that guy that far out, you lose the angle trying to make the block. Exactly. Guys are trying to get out there, trying to help out a little bit, and, and uh, the angle is not good to block. Clipping. Number two on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still remains second down. So it's Brandon West who was called for the clip. It'll be second down, but the football will be pushed deep into Bronco territory. All the way back to the 10-yard line. That's where they'll have it, so it'll be second down and 20. 14-6. Mountaineers have scored on two of their three possessions here in the opening quarter. Clock is winding down. Gorgeous day. Temperature in the upper 70s. Plenty of sunshine. West again the lone setback. Hiller works out of the shotgun on second and long. Fake the inside handoff. Hiller looks, looks, throws short. West makes the catch. Gets outside the 10 to about the 12-yard line before he's nailed. Johnny Dingle, number 92, a senior. Another one from Miami, Florida. There for the defense. Gain of three, and there you see the clear skies, a sold-out crowd of 60,000, and down at that far end zone. They're going to be making a lot of changes here in the hills of West Virginia. They've added some suites down at that north end, and after the season is over, they're going to take out the other end and redo all of the uh, locker rooms, uh, the uh, weight room. It's all going to be redone. All part of the package for Rich Rodriguez, and that's part of the reason he's still here. He deserves it. Still third and long. Hiller looking, throwing, downfield. Caught. Terrific catch by Jamarco Simmons. There were defenders there. Williams was with him. Went up for the ball, but Simmons makes the catch and picks up a big first down for Western Michigan. Facing a zone. Uh, again, a penalty will bring it back. Yes, sir. Wipes it out. Well, let's take a look at the replay. 
After we get the call from the official, we think we have spotted the infraction for Western Michigan that's going to wipe out a nice game. Holding. 67 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. That's uh, Reb Johnson. Rob Johnson, rather. It's third down. There he is, number 67. We're working on Scooter, working on number 95, Ingram. It was a great catch. 26-yard pass play is wiped out. Now the ball's back at the seven-yard line again. You see how Jamarco Simmons finds gaps in that zone defense. And, you know, he's not the fastest, but very, very effective. 61 grabs, 688 yards last year. Vince Thompson is the running back. And that's West. He's wrapped up quickly. He got back to about the line of scrimmage, maybe another yard or two before Mark Magro. The senior from Morgantown made the tackle, and that's going to end the first quarter of play. Mountaineers have the lead after the first 15 minutes. All on pass plays. The last one was a 50-yarder. Great job. There's the slant for the first touchdown. They got another one later. They lead it 14 to 6 as we head to the second quarter in Morgantown. Quarter is underway. A little bit of a line drive kick. He'll field it at the 48 from right up the middle. And be brought down near the 42-yard line. Tackle on the play by London Fryer. And yes, that is Irving Fryer. He was a starter last year, but is not starting so far this year. But Fryer made the tackle on the special team. 45-yard punt, 11-yard return, and another flag on the field. I think that's to be expected maybe in these early games, you know? Well, you know, it is, and it's a shame. You know, the thing is, Western Michigan, at kickoff and uh, at special teams really is the number one special teams in the MAC. But, uh, you know, you're going to have these kind of plays like this. Five yards on the kicking team. First down. Opening game. There's no exhibition football in college football. So you're going to have things like this happen. But, uh, you know, it's uh, you don't mind a penalty that's over-aggressive or trying somebody's working hard, but carelessness or, or things like that, that's, that's something First I can do. And they come out ready to go. Slayton. All Sowers is in there, number 12. Raynaud. And you've got four wideouts in this formation. Working out of the gun, and they didn't huddle when they came on the field. We never see him huddle except on the sidelines. That's about the only time. Now White looks over, hit his bench. And we have a shocking football score we're going to report to you when we get a chance. White in trouble, and he's not going to get away. White is dropped on the play. McConnell made the play. He's going to lose just a yard. I think that play was kind of messed up from the start. It didn't look like it really had a, what they planned. Well, what, what I think must have ha what happened here. There, look at this. How about that? 26 seconds left. App State, which had a big lead, a two-touchdown lead, pulls out the winning field goal and knocks off number five Michigan. That is unbelievable. Was that the Appalachian State homecoming game? <laughs> Well, they're not only going to get a big check, they're going to get a big win. Here's White. Spins away, and he's still on his feet at the 30. Tries to get outside and does. 20, pointing to his blockers. 10, 5, touchdown. What a run. Unbelievable. No flags. 38 yards. Wow. It looked like he was going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage. And that's pure athleticism. You know, he, he tossed a couple of touchdown passes earlier, and now he does it with his feet. And he's the total package. John, and he's much stronger, again, as we said, than his uh, program weight indicates, 185 pounds. Pat McAfee again. Jeremy Cash, the holder. Third PAT is up and good. Now 21-6. to six. The Mountaineers beginning to flex their muscles a little bit. Of course, they got good field position after the penalty on the punt return. But Pat White, 25th career rushing touchdown, and this is a beauty. Watch the moves. Gets away from two defenders there. Another deke, another move, and then he points for his blockers. Okay, you get this guy, I'll get this guy, and I'll score. And that's how it works. 21 to 6, a scintillating run by Mike White, who is quite a kid. He's a terrific athlete and a very good young man. And I tell you what, he did a wonderful job on that play. Kept it alive at the line of scrimmage. And for Rich Rodriguez and company, he was able to 
get downfield and make the touchdown. So another kickoff coming. West will be deep again. And you know these West Virginia kids were anxious to play somebody oh. other than a teammate, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's West again, this time at about the six-yard line. He's at the 20. Across the 25, out to the 30. And that'll be the starting field position. A 24-yard return. Sims made the tackle, and let's look again at an exciting athletic run by number five. He really improvises with this play just all over the field, and Rich Rodriguez has a saying, scratch where it itches. You know, he had a couple of touchdown tosses. Now he does it on the ground, and he just... Let's him loose and the athleticism takes over, but you won't see many runs better than that. And let me just say this, you know, people have said this is subject to debate, but people, when Michael Vick came out of Virginia Tech, they said, oh, he'll never be a quarterback in the NFL. This kid can be a quarterback in the NFL. And they, they're looking at him maybe as a wide receiver or running back, John, but he may have the skills, more skills than people thought. And defensively, Lewis is out there despite the injury, and he is playing. Brandon West is the man in motion as Hiller goes out of the shotgun and that's going to be a flag coming all the way from downfield will be a delay of game call delay game. Delay game. let's talk about offense. number five a little bit I know he's an excellent young man he was a good baseball player as well he was he was the number one draft choice in the fourth round by the Anaheim Angels back in 2004 and I had a chance to visit with Steve Savarese in uh, Daphne Alabama the, the uh, high school coach for Pat White and he said a couple of things you know he had a rule every week that a different uh, position in high school Daphne would have to clean the locker rooms be at the tight ends the interior linemen and defensive backs and every week Pat White cleaned the locker room with the position regardless if it was his turn or not and there comes the flag for the movement and right now the Broncos are out of sorts but that is a great story yeah, and you know something else he did, you know, Steve Savarese used to play the guitar during Christmas time every every Christmas season for nursing homes and such. And he used to get maybe two or three guys, and Pat White was one of those kids. And it started off with four or five guys, John, and before long, Patrick White was such a leader that there were 150 to 200 students would show up at the nursing homes to sing for the nursing home people with Steve Savarese. He's a leader. People follow him, and he does it by example. And, you know, he's not afraid to roll up his sleeves and be a part of it. Shotguns, it's the 20 yards for the first down, and Hiller's looking for room. He'll go down at about the 22-yard line. Doug Slavitic made the tackle, a two-yard pickup. We are in Morgantown, West Virginia. Mike Mountaineer Field, 60,000 on hand, all dressed in old gold and blue for the opening game. I'm John Sanders along with Renee Nado, and happy to have you with us as well. Total offense. West Virginia has been able to move the ball every time they've had it. A total of 221 yards. And rushing wise, that total is not as much as you would expect because this is a team that averaged 300 yards a game on the ground last year. Second down, still long. Pass is complete at the 35 yard line. Jamarco Simmons, who is their top receiver, makes the catch. And Ryan Monday, the transfer from Michigan, made the tackle, a gain of 13. It'll be third down and about five. The thing just now about Hiller, he stood st uh, strong in the pocket, and uh, the offensive line picked up the blitz, did a good job of delivering the ball to Simmons, and picked up a nice uh, nice throw in second down. Picked up 13 yards on that play. He'll still go from the gun because it's third down and five. Hiller looks, throws. That one is intercepted at the 40. The Mountaineers have picked it off. It was Lewis, number six. We didn't even think he was going to play, and he comes up with an interception, a turnover, and that'll give the Mountaineers great field position at the 40 of the Broncos. And this is starting to unravel now for Western Michigan. And Hiller is not a guy that throws a lot of interceptions. He only had three interceptions in 2005. But he's look, he's, he's not setting his feet. That rush is getting to him. And I think he's a little confused by the defense that the Mountaineers are throwing at him right now. And, and Hiller is just not setting up. He's He uh, has an ear, if you will, and listening the way that rush is coming from. And he's just not, uh, you know, feel comfortable in the pocket right now. Three wide receiver formation. Slayton and White in the backfield. Smith at the tight end. Quick hitter ahead across the 35-yard line. Duclos made the tackle. He'll pick up five on the play. Duclos, a nice tackle there. It's second down. 
You can see the Mountaineers, they're ready to go anytime. Raynod, Gonzalez, Jala, the wide receivers right now for West Virginia. And Schmidt is the tight end. He has only handled the ball once on one short carry. There's a reverse. It's Raynaud. Slips down as he got inside the 35, maybe to the 33-yard line. There to cover him up was C.J. Wilson, a redshirt junior from Chicago. Now just a yard on the play, and it'll be still third down. You can't see it right here, but they're playing combo coverage. They're playing man up on one side and zone on the other. Good block by Pat White. And his feet, Raynaud's feet just slide from underneath him. But they strung that play out pretty good. Came up and filled and uh, kept him short of a first down territory. Schmidt is the fullback. Four wideouts in the formation. We have yet to see much of Jock Sanders or Noel Devon. And White is not going to get there. Ripped down as he tried to get inside. Cialinski. Cody Cialinski, number 68, made the tackle. Of course, you know the faithful want him to go for it. You know, Cialinski, 6'2", 257, that's his program weight, so usually they fudge a little bit, but he's an interior lineman playing against some big guys up front, so Cialinski is one of the better defensive linemen for the Broncos. Steve Slayton moves out to wide receiver. Schmidt is still a tight end. A four-receiver formation for the Mountaineers as they go for it on fourth down. Second time they've gone for it on fourth, and that would hit Jotha basically right in the head. Pass, to 21 White just delivered that ball. It was a crossing pattern. One receiver went in. Jala came on a slant, and I think he was just not expecting the ball right I there. I don't think you're. I think you're right. I don't think he was expecting it. Quickly, White just three-step drop and delivers the ball, and Jala. Boom. He just didn't see it. Maybe came out of the sunlight. Who knows? That's well, the first time they've been stopped by the defense. The other time they were stopped, they turned it over, and the first incompletion for Pat White. He had thrown. Two touchdown passes in the ball game. Well, the Broncos will get it back at their own 33-yard line. Brandon West, the running back, smothered at the line of scrimmage. Not much there at all defensively. Morty Ivy, and what they'll do sometimes, they'll bring these backs up into tight positions along that line a lot. Yeah, they will employ a, uh, you know, they play that 3-3 stack, 3-3-5, but sometimes they'll bring Magro, uh, a linebacker, they'll even bring a safety in. You know, they play with a free safety, a band and a spur, and a spur safety is basically a monster back or outside linebacker, but they can move them around. Very, very good defensive scheme. Filler on second down 10. Throws out into the flat. The pass is caught. Once again, it's Jamarco Simmons, the junior from Flint, Michigan. He is their number one receiver. He's going to get about four on the play. We're inside the 10-minute mark. Time left in the opening half. Mountaineers have scored on three of five possessions thus far. Two touchdown passes for White and one touchdown run for Patrick. Third and six. Third down, six. West is the setback. Man in motion, Martin and Simmons of the wideouts. Hiller throws downfield, passes caught for a first down, making the catch is Martin. In front of Lewis, and that'll be a first down. They get it very close to Mountaineer territory, the spot of the 49-yard line, 11-yard pickup. And Hiller with good protection, eight in the box, come right at him, but an out route. Proved successful as Martin with uh, 30 grabs last year for 365 yards and a big catch for a first down for the Broncos. Slavonic, Merlo, and Ingram are the defensive linebackers for Western Michigan. West and Thompson in there together right now. That's West with it, and he'll get to midfield and be ridden down on the plate. Not much at all there. Maybe got inside the 50. West. 5'10", 169-pound sophomore from Brunswick, Georgia. Last year, rushed for 633 yards. But he had a good international bowl game, 109 yards in a touchdown against Cincinnati, 117 yards in a score against Central Michigan on 22 carries, only 169 yards, pretty durable. Ball just inside the 50. Here comes the sweep to West. He's drilled as he gets to about the 46-yard line, and it's Mark Magro. Making the hit only a couple yards on the play. Broncos trying to 
get a drive going here at the midway point of the second quarter and see if they can get on the board. They use some razzle dazzle to get their only touchdown. This West Virginia defense, John, runs pretty good. You see him sideline to sideline. It's tough to outrun them. Sometimes you, you know, what do you do? Get a reverse or you run against the green, but it's tough to outrun them to the sideline. This is a five receiver formation. Now for the Broncos, the preseason pick in the Mac. Hiller guns it. What a catch for a first down. He was lying on the ground when he made the play. And that is Jordan White, number 83 from North Ridgeville, Ohio. That's quite a grab right there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's dangerous in the open field. And I'm not a big guy, 6 feet 206, but a nice catch here. And, and Hiller recognizes that. You see right away he goes to a second read. That's a second read right there throw. Nice throw and catch. You know, the thing about this West Virginia defense is they allow you one read, maybe two reads, but after that, you better get rid of the ball quickly, and that was a good adjustment by Hiller. West is the lone setback. Martin and Simmons are the wideouts. And did they take too much time again? Yes, they did. And that will not make the head coach happy, will it? Five-yard penalty remains first down. Well, you know, Cubit was pretty upset about that. I think, you know, he may be checking out because of the movement and the things that West Virginia is employing right now. And, and I think that may be causing, because, you know, when they change the plays, the offensive scheme changes and uh, the offensive line calls change, and that may be causing them to use too much time. Yeah, the back judge, Paul Vargo, is the one who made the call. They'll go with a double tight end now. Ledbetter and Schultz are both out there. Here's the quick handoff to the reverse man, that's DeMarco Simmons, and he is tackled for a loss. DeMarco Simmons, Malik made the tackle defensively. Loss of three. Good handoff, and loss of three. it looked like it was developing, but Malik on the ground makes the stop. That's extra effort. Oh, I tell you, when you're on the ground, you make a tackle. That's, that's really giving it everything you have. And uh, Malik just, when you're on the ground, don't stay on the ground. Past the midway point of the second quarter, it is second down and long. 18. Hiller hit the pitch. The ball is loose. Mountaineers are going to have it. Williams makes the recovery. A little late on making the pitch was Hiller to West. And Williams recovers West Virginia. It's their second turnover of the opening half, and we'll have the football about 37 yards away. That play was dead from the get-go. You see Hiller holding on to the ball, waits way too long to the ball, to the, the collapse on him, throws the ball, wasn't a very good pitch behind the runner, and uh, West Virginia, again, with great field position, and Hiller just uh, poor decision and a poor execution on that pitch. First and 10, ball of 37. So at the 37, the Mountaineers will have it go out of the I formation. Schmidt is the fullback. And here's the pitch to Slayton. Trying to get to the corner. A flag down. Like maybe a face mask. Delmas made the tackle, but we'll check the call. 641 to play. Personal foul. Face mask. Number nine on the defense. 15-yard penalty. 15 yard. That's the major face mask on Delmas. So the brakes are not going the Broncos' way right now. There you see it. Wow. <laughs> that's a face mask violation right there. That's Look at this. I mean, he's, I guess, use everything you can to get him to the ground, but that's, uh, you're penalized for that. This is a third start in Western Michigan territory for the Mountaineers. Had a good field position, cutting the field in half for him. You know, Bedellis, good open field tackling in space. Talked about how good he is and what kind of prospects he may have for the future. And Schmidt back to tight end. Raynaud. Gonzalez. Jala in there as the wide outs right now. This fight works alone in the backfield. First down 10. Ball at the 22. Looking for the end zone. Yes. No. He couldn't hang on. That way pass. Had him. Intended for Slayton. He got behind the defender that time, C.J. Wilson, but just could not quite hang on. Pretty good throw, though. A nice touch throw, and Slayton comes out of the backfield. You see him in a slot, and he just goes on a goal pattern. And single coverage, 
and the defensive back just lost him. He didn't know where it was, C.J. Wilson, and Slayton should have had that. Usually he does, and well, maybe second down. Slightly to the inside part of his shoulder as now Schmidt comes out. Sowers is on. They'll go with four wide outs. Slayton is in the backfield alongside White. Second down, 10. We're still in the second quarter in Morgantown, West Virginia, opening day. There's a bullet pass. That's going to be a first down at the 10-yard line. Darrell Jala made the catch. A 12-yard pickup and a first down for the Mountaineers. And he can gun it when he needs to, Rene. He really does. And, and you know, he's got a good, good arm, good strong arm. And the thing is, they picked up the blitz once again. Here comes the blitz, and he sees the wide-open interior. And Jala, who scored on a touchdown, a similar play, comes up with yet another grab and no huddle offense. Now Schmidt back in there now at fullback. Three wide out formation with Slayton the tailback and there's the quick hitter upside to Schmidt and he'll be stacked up after a gain of one by the middle part of that line. Dawson is in there. Duclo was in there as well. All kinds of defenders for Western Michigan as they try to hang on here in the closing moments of the second quarter. We're inside the six minute mark and there's Schmidt. The guy that plays all over the place. He'll play tailback. He'll play fullback. They can split him out in the slot. Play him at tight end. Right now they split the backs. And it's Slayton powering his way down to the goal line. Steve Slayton on the carry. C.J. Wilson made the saving tackle. A gain of seven. Tackle by 59. Good handoff right here to Slayton and following his, his shoulder pads. Great left, uh, good block on the left side. Stanchek and allows Slayton to get close to the end zone. It is third down and goal. Ball at the one. Slayton the only man in the backfield right now. And he'll get it, lean in, and score. Slayton, a one-yard touchdown run, expands the lead to 27 to 6 as he scores the touchdown. His second. Good surge of the offensive line. Look, they come up the ball very well and allow that crease where he can get into the end zone. Had a little contact by the goal line, but good momentum going forward. And uh, Pat White, 92% in the red zone as a quarterback. And that's perfect on the extra point. Well, McAfee is 4 of 4. The Mountaineers score their fourth touchdown, lead at 28 to 6 on opening day of college football. A gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Morgantown. Slayton needed a yard. He got the push from the big men up front and leans in. 28 6, West Virginia over Western Michigan. We'll be right back. As advertised, the Mountaineers begin to flex their offensive muscle in the person of White and Slayton here this afternoon. I'm John Sanders along with Rene Nado. And uh, as advertised, that's pretty good offense. They have hit you over the uh, airwaves or on the ground. They've done it both ways, and even special teams have done a good job. But Pat White, boy, I tell you what, both Steve Slayton and Pat White have not hurt their Heisman hopeful uh, chances here this evening. And Rich Rodriguez is happy to see his team playing well. They did turn it over once on the fumble. Snyder Julian will be deep. He is the highly touted junior college player, and he's not been out there much today, but Snyder's going to be back. They call him Spider because they can't decide if his name is Julian Snyder or Snyder Julian, so they just call him Spider, and they're done with it. Well, he's a 4-5 sprinter, so be careful. He's got his hands on the ball. He could take it to the house. McAfee kicking off. Spider's going to get a chance. Feels it at about the nine-yard line. Knocked down and lost the ball, but I think he might have gotten it back. A 19-yard return. Glover on the coverage there for West Virginia, and he momentarily lost the handle, but Julian gets it back. See if he stays in the game or leaves. And you see Spider Julian putting a few juke moves on right here. And Yeah, he did lose it, didn't he? He did, and lucky to get the ball Lady Luck smiled on him, bounced, ball bounced right back in his arms. That football always bounces the wrong way, doesn't it? Didn't for him that time. Depends <laughs> whose perspective you're looking at, John. Yeah. Outside the 25 at the 26, it'll be first down and 10. 
Taylor alone in the back. Or, no, he's not alone. It's uh, Barnes who is back there now. A guy that had a good season last year. And Barnes is going to get his first carry. Still on his feet, fighting to get outside, and he will get close to a first down. Williams ran him out with some nice running. He fought off the defenders and gets out to about the 35, maybe a yard short of the first to nine yard pickup. And Bonds did a good job just uh, taking what they gave him and bouncing it outside. Seven on the line of scrimmage for West Virginia. And look, he just, uh, you know, supposed to go inside, just bounces it, bounces it, keeps those legs moving. Seven touchdowns, 4.3 yards per carry out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Did a good job. And he's trying to get the first down, fighting up the middle. I don't think he's going to make Bonds it. On the carry. No gain on that play. Maybe a half a yard or so, and that's about it. He was stacked up in the middle. That's uh, Scooter Berry was there. Eric this Wicks. Stop by 93. Scooter Berry. And Berry with the tackle. The ball is still and right at the 35, down. and it's third and maybe a half a yard to go. They like they like Scooter Berry from North Babylon, New York. He's just a freshman. They think he's got a good future here in West Virginia. Throwing on third down. Flag goes down. He did not make the first down. Williams They're made going. the hit. The river's there as well, but I'm telling you, the flag in the background, in the backfield. Flag on the play. Yep, that's what it was. The, in fact, it was the referee that threw the flag. Yeah, you got to think Coach Cuban's got to be very upset with these penalties. A lot of them coming from the uh, offensive line, maybe, and don't know if that one was, but... Uh... <laughs> See, so Hiller trying to make something happen, and... The hole was on the right side of your screen. We yeah, can't see it. But you can see the referee, though, looking right at the play. Holding. He Holding. didn't make the first down offense. anyway. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains third down. So they will move him back on the holding call. It'll be third down and 11 with 3.46 to play. Nick Sad was called for the hold. Nick is a fullback who was in on that play. This is what West Virginia likes. They can pin their ears back. It's third and long, and, you know, they come and they know he's going to pass. Four receivers. Bonds is the lone setback. Killer out of the gun. Looking right down the middle, throws it down the middle. It's caught. Did he make the catch? Ledbetter, the excellent tight end, is going to pick up a big first down on third and 11. He'll move it out to about the 44-yard line, a gain of 18 yards on the play. And Ledbetter, highly touted tight end, and he has done nothing to disappoint. He's also another guy from South Florida. He's from Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, we talked about it. He had nine grabs for 101 yards against Miami. He finds the open crease in the zone defense. Credit Hiller with throwing right between the defenders. But uh, Ledbetter is definitely a receiving threat, more of a, of a run, receiving quarterback uh, tight end of the block. Hiller is in trouble now, and down he goes. Magro and Lewis. Lewis coming up out of that defensive backfield to apply the pressure. They'll get him for a loss of eight. And they come in a blitz. Hiller drops back before he knows it. West Virginia, West Virginia is all over him. Nowhere to go. He didn't know where they came from. Popped out of the ground. Uh, Magro said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Look at that. 18 plays, six total wow. yards, two turnovers in their last four drives. West is back in there as the setback. Hiller looks, throws, caught across midfield. Again, it's Ledbetter. He's going to be very close to a first down. Might have it. Depends on the fast. spot. But Ledbetter, the big tight end. That's something that West Virginia doesn't really do very much. They don't throw to the tight end very much. Well, you know, he had 37 grabs last year for 423 yards, and that was a tight end at West Western Michigan a couple of years ago, Tony Scheffler, who was a second-round draft choice of the Denver Broncos. He had 57 grabs in his offense, so he's uh, Brandon Ledbetter is very, very similar to, to Scheffler. Flag before the play from the 45 gets underway. It is a first and 10 for the Broncos. And Rich not right happy down. right now Ball with start. his defense, specifically offense. Lewis. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. It's a five yard penalty against the Broncos. March it back to midfield. Big statistical edge, obviously, for West Virginia in this football game. But the Broncos really have hurt themselves. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, they've done some good things, John. Uh, penalties have, have changed the way they approach. You know, when, you, when you're looking at a first and 15 and 
you know, second and 15 or whatever, changes the way you look things. And, and uh, they've moved the ball a little bit, but keep shooting themselves in the foot with penalties. Miller completes the pass to Jamarco Simmons. He's got some room. Finally run out, forced out on the play by Derville. He's complete. 27, Jamarco Simmons. And Simmons with a big game. The passing game is working pretty well, and it was really the Achilles heel for West Virginia a year ago. And you got a crossing pattern here with uh, Jamarco Simmons, and Hiller finds him wide open. We talked about he causes a mismatch problem. 6'2", 234. He's kind of lumbering a little bit, but, you know, he can get open. He had nine catches for 123 yards against Florida State. 13 catches, John, for 172 against Cincinnati in the bowl game. So he just knows how to get open. Martin, Julian, and Simmons are the wideouts. That throw is short, and it is caught by Simmons. Jamarco Simmons, the tackle, applied by Malik. Short gain on the play. But he's now completed seven straight passes, has Hiller, since that interception. He's in a rhythm right now, and he's feeling good, and, and you know, his safety valve is Simmons. And uh, last couple of times, he's had ample time. Prussia hasn't gotten to him. He's had ample time to deliver the ball, and Simmons is, is starting to put up some serious numbers here for the Broncos. Going out of the shotgun this time is Hiller. West alongside. West turns into a blocker. That one is deflected. Scooter Berry, number 93, got a piece of that one. So with 126 to play, a 28 to 6 score. It's third we'll down. Turn to third down. Juan Nunez was coming on a crossing pattern as a wide receiver for the Broncos, and that's what Hiller was looking for, and they didn't get a chance to complete that pass. Ball is at the 24-yard line. And here's Hiller dropping back, trying to find a receiver wide open. He was looking for number 81, Nunez, and couldn't find his ball. A good block applied that time by West. And now West slips the block, catches the short pass, and is going to be stopped at the 20-yard line. Four-yard pickup on the play. Dingle and Mundy were there defensively, along with Johnny Holmes, the Mountaineers. They like to isolate this guy, West, and get him out in space. Not a big guy, 169, but he runs a 4 5 5 40. He's faster. You know, he's got that game speed, John. And, Timeout. and moves pretty well. Michigan. Michigan. Second you know, he's, Timeout. he's been a, a big weapon for these Broncos here this evening. A second timeout taken by the Broncos here in the opening half. Archie Simmons coming back on for West Virginia defensively as they try to hold him right here. We have a minute and 15 seconds left to play. In the opening half, the Broncos trying to figure out a way to get on the board late. Mountaineers, number three, leading. Broncos are ready to go as we come back to Mountaineer Field. They've got the ball at the 20-yard line. Fourth down play. Trying to put something together, keep this drive alive. The throw, the catch. Simmons has the first down. Archie Sims, number 42, a junior college transfer, was there on the coverage. But I'll tell you, this guy has turned out to be a top-notch receiver in this game this afternoon. Again, he reminds me of Marcus Colston of the New Orleans Saints, who had a great rookie season last year. And you had a couple of routes right here. Simmons did an out route, and... Uh, Martin cleared for him, did a, did a go, and uh, well, Hiller, Hiller had his choice. Eight passes for 103 wow. yards, caught already. Might set a record here for himself, personal record. It's first down at the 14-yard line. To the end zone. Almost picked off. It was in the hands of Reed Williams, and he could not hang on. And plenty of defenders back that time. They had like four of the... Blue shirts in the end zone and one receiver, and then the Mountaineers almost got their second interception. That big gust of wind just now, John, was a collective <laughs> from the Western Michigan sideline. He threw it to five blue jerseys, wow. and he's lucky he didn't come up with an interception. Williams almost got that one, just over a minute to play. Straight ahead run by West, and he's going to power his way close to a first down. Mundy made the stop. I don't think he got quite enough. It looks like he's going to be at the five, so he's going to be about a yard short. Nine-yard pickup. This has been a pretty good drive for the Broncos, despite the fact, you know, what has happened on some of their other possessions. They've, they're the ones making the mistakes. And you, you have to credit the offensive line for the success of this drive. They've done really, really stepped up and taking control of that line of scrimmage. West. Don't know. Dingle made the tackle for the Mountaineers, number 92. Dykes there as well. 
And let's see what the spot is. That's if it's there, it's going to be a first down. And I think they're going to have to check it out. Well, the officials will take time with just 31 seconds remaining to figure this one out. And the Mountaineers will get a chance to regroup in the shadow of their own goal. Rich Rodriguez offense has scored on four possessions. A couple of passing touchdowns and a couple of rushing touchdowns so far today. And it's going to move just short about the length of the football. But this has been a good drive for the Broncos of Western Michigan. And they're trying to get in the end zone before the half is over. This will test the metal of the offensive line of the Broncos and West Virginia's defensive line and see if they can hold them right here. Well, Fourth down. you got to go for it, obviously, and you got to make uh, hay when the sun shines. Well, four minutes and 15 seconds, 30 plays. They've marched 70 yards. It's been a very well performed drive and a lot of it coming on the passing of Hiller and his favorite target much of the time has been Jamarco Simmons. You know anybody from the Mac better watch this this game film and know that what's in store when Hiller and Jamarco Simmons team up this season they're gonna be a deadly duo. But also Ledbetter he's impressed us quite a bit. Absolutely. With Ledbetter nice was a big part of this drive and the other thing that this does if you're the Broncos it keeps that Mountaineer offense off the field. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to eat a clock and move methodically down the field and gain. You want to certainly get a reward for your efforts here and come up with some points. Well, coming up at halftime on their ESPN Plus halftime report, all access look at West Virginia coach Rich Rodriguez. You'll enjoy that. And we'll double check some of the Heisman Trophy candidates in the Big East. We'll have the Fourth highlights down. and stats as well. Fourth down. Big, big play here in Morgantown. Killer throws, incomplete, but there's pass interference. Keith Schultz was the intended receiver. Ryan Mundy was part of that defensively, and that call, I believe, is going to go against the Mountaineers. They ran from that stack eye, and, you know, everyone would have thought they'd have run up the middle. Number 21 on the defense. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Well, the pass interference call against Ryan Monday will set him up at the two. Take a look. It looked like they might get him. Some good pressure was being applied defensively by. Looks like Magro had him. Yeah, Magro arms. had him. First and goal. And, uh, you know, Monday is a guy who had 18 stars for the Wolverines. Uh, three Rose Bowl appearances, and he's been around the block quite a few times, a lot of experience, and he may have saved the touchdown, so they live to fight another day. Let's see if they put it in the hands of West. No. Hiller. Looking, 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 still looking. Now running and spinning in the end zone a touchdown. Richardson made the hit, but it was too little too late. And touchdown number two for the Broncos, and that caps a very effective drive for them. And Hiller went through a number of reads looking for a second or third receiver. Supposed to be play action, I think. He's just sitting back and waking, looking left, looking right. Now his best option is take it as a foot soldier. And you're looking at a 6'5", 228-pound quarterback, so that's a pretty big runner. If he gets any momentum, he's going over into the end zone, and he scored. And they will go for two. Second career touchdown for Hiller, who did not play in 2006. Suffered a knee injury in 2005 after seven games and was rehabbing all of last year, but he's played very well. Martin and Simmons are the wideouts. Ledbetter, the tight end. Looking, looking, throwing. He made the catch. Ledbetter right at the back of the end zone. The big tight end from Fort Lauderdale. 6'5", 230-pound redshirt junior. Brandon Ledbetter picks up the two-point conversion. So they get back the extra point that they missed earlier in the game. And the lead has been trimmed to 14. And this is a confidence booster to this Absolutely. offense that has worked so hard. Hiller dropping back plenty of time and finds Ledbetter in the, in the corner of the uh, back by the goal and by the post. He runs a post pattern and hits his mark right in stride, right at a perfect throw. And he was wide open at the back of the end zone that time. So we'll flip it over. Mountaineers will maybe have time to run one play. We'll see how it goes following the kickoff. They will send Darrison 
Raynaud and Rivers back to receive the kickoff. You know, John Hiller has found uh, Jamarco Simmons as his favorite receiver this year. He had a, a pretty good receiver as a freshman, Greg Jennings, who fans may remember with the Green Bay Packers. Right. Now he's not drafted. So he's he's always had, been blessed with some pretty good receivers here while he's with the Broncos. Well, they've got an outstanding program in the works, and they've really been under Bill Cubitt's leadership. They have really come on to the point where they're the favorites to win the MAC this year. Go to another bowl game. They hadn't been to a bowl game for 18 years until they went and played Cincinnati and Toronto. Bouncing kick is going to be fielded at the 20 yard line. And diving out of bounds on the return. So West Virginia will have decent field position and they'll still have almost 13 seconds to do something with it. Tackled by two, Brandon West. With Patrick White and Steve Slayton as the. Uh, primary weapons for the Mountaineers you know they, they're only the second quarterback running back tandem to exceed 200 yards per rushing in a single game that's you know they both did it against Pittsburgh White had 220 yards Slayton 215 against the Panthers last year three wideouts actually four wideouts in this formation one maybe two plays coming up we'll see if he tries to go downfield Just 12 seconds remaining, and they go inside to Slayton, and he's going to be pushed back and dragged down by Vacatapane. Nick Vacatapane would not be moved out of there. Well, he stayed right with him, and that's probably going to do it. And it is. They'll head to the locker room. That's the gun, and that's going to be the end of the first half. Well played first half. Mountaineers put four touchdowns on the board. But the Broncos have cut that lead to 14 now as they were able to get on the board in the closing seconds. So they have certainly, despite all the mistakes Renee that they made they have managed to stay in the ball game really have in that last drive this is when you want to get it a confidence booster uh, you know going into the half and I think Bill Cube is certainly going to come out of something good an offensive line really give them credit the game ball for the last drive did an outstanding job they certainly did and they got over some mistakes that they made in the first half with the Mountaineers going twice through the air twice on the ground White and Slayton have been a big part of it they are celebrating a halftime lead in Morgantown but the Broncos are trying to battle back. Our halftime activity begins. Our ESPN Plus halftime report. A look, a closer look at Rich Rodriguez coming up after this. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. We're at halftime, the battle between the MAC Conference and the Big East. It's West Virginia hosting Western Michigan, and we played the first half of the opening game of the season for these two teams. And Renee and I have talked a lot about Rich Rodriguez during the first half. Here's a closer look at the sometimes fiery Rich Rodriguez at work. What a beautiful day in Morgantown, West Virginia, huh? We got to get spring break out of you. What are you doing all spring break, Bobby? Go show up on any videos? Quarterbacks. Hey, when it's spread out too, make them commit to you when you're running. Got it? I think our team is hungry. You know, we finished second in the Big East last year for the first time in four years not winning it. And I think that it's made our players even more hungry. I hope so. And, and certainly what they do this spring is going to play a big role in showing us as coaches how hungry they are. Got to be accurate with the throw. Don't make it hard. Make it easy. Make it easy. Make it easy. There you go. There you go. Hey, Ed, do you understand what a hand up means? That tells him you're going deep. You put your hand up and went short. We have high expectations all the time now, and the fact that we're going to be ranked very highly to, to me is not news anymore, and I think it's not news for our players as well. And fortunately, for the last several years, we've, we've finished very highly, and, and our team expects to compete for championship, expects to compete for New Year's Day bowl games, and this year will be no exception. You keep working till we blow the whistle. Don't blow the whistle till the damn plays past them, Greg. Falling on the ground, Eric. That's what's going to happen. You're falling on the ground because you're reaching, Eric. Bring your feet. Hey, Steve, is there a tight end next to you? Get a three point stance, knucklehead. It's like a pillow fight. I swear to God, it's like a pillow fight. Both sides of the ball. Get out. Don't stop. Why would you quit? Throw him the ball. That guy's falling down. Throw him the ball. He's a competitor. Why would mm -hmm. you stop, Jeremy? He gets a little riled up out there, but I guess that's good for us. It means he likes to compete. I mean, he loves what he does. Slide, 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 Selvish. 
That's it, Savage. Hands inside. There you go. That's it, Savage. Keep him in there. Keep working. Keep it working. That ain't this bad. team that knows it's going to take a great challenge for everybody. We have that target on our back. We've had it for several years. We've got to embrace it, relish it, and go prove it uh, each and every day. Work on three. One, two, three. Work. Line up. Let's go. Well, plenty of emotion, and I think, Renee, also plenty of success for the guy who came back to his alma mater. He's got a tough mindset, John, and it spills over into the team. No quit. You know, look back last year in the uh, Toyota Gator Bowl against Georgia Tech. Mountaineers came storming back from an 18-point third-quarter deficit. Uh, Patrick White and Steve Slayton fought through some injuries. Uh, Owen Schmidt, 109 yards, and they came away with a 38-35 to win. That was really a, 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 you know, really standard, a good win for the Mountaineers. And you look at, he's a natural born recruiter 22 players from Florida 30 from Pennsylvania but you know he hasn't forgotten where he's come from he was a walk-on in 82 to 84 he's got 26 players through five years John have been awarded scholarships that really says a lot it says a lot about his success what about the success of the two guys we're watching today they are Heisman candidates there are other Heisman candidates from the Big East we'll talk about that when we come back to more 28-14 is our score, and I guess here in Morgantown they have the answer to the cheese heads with the hot dog head, and they've got the lead by a couple of touchdowns. We welcome you back again to the Coliseum, sold out to the tune of 60,000 with Renee Nato. I'm John Sanders. First off, we're going to get right to some highlights, and we had a lot of action in that opening 30 minutes, so we've got a lot of highlights to show you, and of course, as expected, it was West Virginia striking first with their very potent offense. You know, it's not how you finish, it's how you, it, it's how you start here, and they had a pretty good start right here. I'll tell you what, West Virginia came out hot, and you can see that Pat White shows he's got a little touch. We talked about how he's improved as a passer, and he finds a receiver old early. This was a big play, a 59-yarder, a great grab there made but unfortunately at the end of the play he lost the football special team the turnovers play a role here and western michigan dodged a bullet you can see they maybe stole a page from boise state a little bit with a little, little uh, trickery and uh, it, it turned into points for western michigan well and this is the guy everybody loves to watch he had that angle when he made that catch in the flat and there was nobody going to catch him no one's going to catch him from behind he's got explosive speed and another touchdown for slate and you can see Patrick White with a little jello in his boots, if you will, a little wiggle, and he can do it with his arm or his feet. Another touchdown for Pat White. He's got two on the even. Well, a great run there. That was a 38-yard touchdown run. And the problem, again, for the Broncos, in some respects, they managed to overcome their own mistakes. An interception there. Later, they're going to put the ball on the ground. And... Uh, there was a late pitch and a fumble. So they made some mistakes. They had a lot of penalties, but they're still very much in this football game. It's hurt them, John. As the Broncos have been hurt by their own mistakes with uh, penalties and uh, just mistakes. And you can see Slayton with a good second effort there on a touchdown. Well, Slayton got into the end zone, but the Broncos didn't quit. In the closing seconds, it was Hiller looking, looking, looking. Everybody was covered. Well, he got the touchdown. They made the two-point conversion. And thus, they cut that lead to 14 at halftime. It's 28 to 14. I think if we uh, check out the stats, we'll see that they're going to be dominated heavily by West Virginia because they had the most of the possessions until that very last drive by the Broncos. And the Broncos did good. They, they went into the halftime and feeling really good about that last drive. The offensive line really excelled, and they kind of closed the gap 28-14, but it's the way they did it. I think they kind of got back in sync again. Well, maybe the most surprising part of that, as far as those stats are concerned, is the time of possession. And a lot of that came on the last possession for Western Michigan. And the number of rushing yards, the Mountaineers, this is a team that averaged over 300 yards a game on the ground, and they had only 86 rushing yards in the first half. And that was one of the keys we talked about earlier, John, is that the fact that they have to play keep away, and if, if West Virginia doesn't have the ball, it's less likely they're going to score, and Western Michigan have to go with their strength, keep away, run the ball, passing the ball. Jamarco Simmons with an outstanding game with eight catches thus far, and Hiller has managed the ball pretty well. He's made a couple of mistakes, but he's looked... You know, he's looking, he has some good things, too. He certainly has. They are very much in this football game. West Virginia, the number three ranked team in the country, will have the football to start the second half. Tailgating continues in Morgantown. The Mountaineers are up by 14. We'll be back. For Western Michigan. 
We are just about ready to start the second half of play here in Morgantown, West Virginia at Mountaineer Field. And a lot of the folks have gone to the parking lots to enjoy some refreshment. And we have been refreshed by the play of these two Heisman candidates. And as you mentioned, they've not really done anything to hurt their cause. I think maybe the thing that maybe surprises me a little bit, Slayton hasn't touched the ball as much as we maybe thought he would. No, but the, the thing is, whatever works, and uh, Patrick White has been a dominating factor out here this evening. In the last four games, uh, last six games last year, he, he averaged 100 yards. Patrick White, 100 yards rushing, 100 yards passing. And uh, today he has 163 yards passing, 62 yards rushing at the halfway point. But Patrick White has really, really shown some skills. And, uh, you know, Steve Slayton hasn't hurt himself with a couple of scores. And Darius Raynod will be deep for the Mountaineers to receive the second half kickoff. Out of the left-footed leg of Mike Jones. And that last drive, that ate up about the last five minutes of the first half, was very important to the Broncos. And they've got to feel much better about their situation. If they can keep from making the mistakes, getting the penalties and the turnovers, I'm sure they feel they can play as the shadows begin to creep across the brand-new field turf that they have here. And we are underway. There's going to be a very short kick. Taken at about the 23-yard line by Sowers. And Sowers will get out to about the 37-yard line, and that's where the Mountaineers, who, for the most part, except for that one possession, they've had pretty good field possession all afternoon. They really have. And, you know, it's interesting about Sowers. He's a converted quarterback. He's like a kamikaze kind of guy. He can play defense, special teams, whatever, and whatever it, whatever it takes, he's out there. Number 12, Nate Sowers. Spotted at the 38-yard line. They set up. Jala is in there. Raynaud is in there at the wide receiver spot. Steve Slayton is in the backfield. Schmidt is in the slot. He plays all over the place. And here's the quick out, and the pass is caught by Raynaud. And he is spun down as he gets the 45-yard line. Tackle made by London Fryer. Well-known father, Irving Fryer. He's a defensive back, is London Fryer. I'm sure Schmidt remember. goes out. Sowers comes in. Now four wideouts in this formation for the Mountaineers. Slayton remains the lone running back. Second and three, a gain of seven on the opening play of the second half. And I'm sure Rich Rodriguez would like to see his offense make a sustained drive and take it down the field. That's going to be good for a first down as he passes on the far side of the field. And making the catch is Darrell Jala. Austin Pritchard, number 35, there defensively. First down, West Virginia. But the Mountaineers will move the chains on their opening possession. They move it into Bronco territory, a gain of eight on the last play. And, of course, you give a lot of this credit to the speed of those two guys in the backfield. But if the holes aren't there from that offensive line, then it's not going to happen. And for the most part, the last couple of years, it has been. There's the quick pass to Raynaud. And he'll be dragged down and stopped right inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Here's the offensive line. One sack allowed, one false start in 29 plays. Well, that's pretty good for the first game, one false start. Oh, man, I tell you, you always have opening game jitters, John. And the thing you have to be impressed with is this West Virginia offensive line is one of the best zone-blocking teams in the country. Not big. You don't have to be 350 pounds to play here. Just you need to be smart, move good, move your feet, and uh, be a good salesman. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, they do an outstanding job and keep Pat White's jersey clean. Well, one of the Broncos is down, so we are going to take a break. London Fire is injured. So we'll step away and come back with more. 13.43 to play third quarter. Mountaineers by two touchdowns. Rich Rodriguez looking on. A second down seven play coming up for his team. We got the ball at the 44-yard uh, line of the Broncos of Western Michigan. The preseason pick to win the MAC. They went 6-2 in the MAC West last year. Lost in the International Bowl to Cincinnati, 27-24. They were the best defensive team in the MAC a year ago. Contested by this West Virginia offense. And more passing downfield he goes. White just a little too tall for Raynaud. 
White's pass intended for Darius Renaud. That's the first time Gebhardt was there on the coverage that he's really tried to stretch it out and go deep. Yeah, he Renaud ran an out and up, and you know they they faced a uh, dime situation, and Pat White found a spot open, and Renaud with that outstanding burst of speed, four four six in the forty, certainly put a good separation between him and the defensive back, and Renaud just turned it up and had a little distance, just a little too long on the throw, and good separation on that run. Sowers is back in there. Slayton has been moved into the wide receiver spot. White looking to pass on third down, now run, running for his life. And again, tried to go to Raynaud, and he could not connect, so it's going to be fourth down. I'm a little surprised they didn't try to turn it upfield that time. Duclos was there defensively. Well, the Mountaineers will punt. Well, White really had a couple of options, and he just waited a little too long. He had some guys deep, one of them being Tito Gonzalez, number 83, but he just waited a little too long, and by the time he spotted him, it was just too little too late. It is the first punt, and it's not a good one. First punt of the afternoon goes out of bounds. The first time the Mountaineers have tried to punt all day, and Pat McAfee and his coach will not be happy about the results of that. McAfee's got a pretty strong lead. He's got a 51-yard field goal against Pittsburgh to his credit, but you couldn't go by that last punt. No, it was a six-yard punt. He could have punched it further than that. They could have used uh, Schmidt to quick kick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> West is here. He is the run, running back. Simmons, Martin, Julian. Other wideouts. Hillers performed very well. They had a great drive to end the first half. Hillers sets, looks. But once again, by Jamarco Simmons, it'll be a short game as he gets outside the 40 to maybe the 42. Williams and Magro team up to make the tackle. And that goes down as a completion, but really it was a harmless play. And West Virginia just dropped back in coverage and kept everything underneath. Uh, nice little pickup, but uh, it looked good in the stats, but not, not much. Good Simmons now with 110 yards, averaging over 12 yards per catch. He's grabbed nine so far. West will be wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Magro was there. So Magro coming in to make the tackle defensively. He picked up maybe one. It'll be third down and about six, maybe five. 12 25 to play. We're in the third quarter. Magro, an interesting number. He's 455 pound brand, 660 squat. Uh, you know, and he can do 28 reps with 225 pounds, so he's got a little thump to him when he hits you. Third down and long. Hiller waits. Now has to move away from the pressure and is hit and throws it downfield incomplete. It was intended for Ledbetter as he was falling out of bounds. Ivy was there on the coverage, but a good job by Hiller just to keep from being sacked. Yeah, he got a lot of pressure into a bombs going off all around him. And, you know, he just, uh, he was just trying to put out fires and was lucky it wasn't a turnover. And, you know, but he made the most out of that play. Rivers will be deep for the Mountaineers. Laney will punt. So each team. Forced to punt on their first possession of the second half. Neither team has been able to score. We still have the same score as halftime. 28-14, number three, West Virginia. Michigan has already lost today to App State at home. Wow. And his kick is a good one. Fair catch called for and taken at the 15-yard line. So that's where the Mountaineers will set up in their second possession of the second half. A 42-yard punt. So West Virginia will have the football with 11.50 to play here in the third quarter. And I think they, I think the line was about 27, 28 points. And maybe there are some people thought the Mountaineers would come out here and run over Western Michigan, but that has not been the case. Well, they, there was some, uh, you know, it showed some uh, spurts with West Virginia, what they can do with Slayton and White and put up some numbers. But West, Western Michigan came back roaring again with that big drive at the end of the second quarter and made it more of a game, just 14 point deficit. Smith is now one of the wide receivers. The inside and off to Slayton. And he's wrestled down after a gain of about a yard. Not much there. Wrapped up by Austin Pritchard. 
One of the linebackers making the tackle after a two-yard gain. We really haven't seen that exploding offense. You know, the first possession, the Mountaineers had the ball. They moved right down the field and scored. Bing, bang, boom. Yeah, and Slate has been kind of quiet. He did score in a two-yard run and also that pass, but uh, he's been kind of silent. You haven't seen the exciting runs out of Slayton that you've seen in the past. Now, Slayton is now a wide receiver in this five-wide receiver formation on second down and eight. Makes the catch. 20, 25. Tried to step away from a tackle, and he goes down at about the 37-yard line. Gebhardt made the hit. Slayton picks up 11 and a first down for West Virginia. You know, it's a nice little pitch and catch by White and Slayton, and also you can't see number 70. Good block right there on the on the edge, but number 70, Rodemeyer, is downfield, a 6'4", 300-pound redshirt freshman blocking downfield. Just the evidence by how that offensive line runs so well. Owen Schmidt moves back into the backfield now as the fullback. Straight ahead handoff and some running room, about eight, maybe nine yards. Richard again made the tackle, but Owen Schmidt, I think that's what his second carry of the game, he made eight yards on the play. Well, Owen Schmidt is a strength All-American, and he's just a throwback. He's busted eight face masks. You know, he could have played, he's kind of a Mike Allstadt a little bit, John, but he could have played in the 50s or 60s, and, and really, uh, he's blood and thunder kind of guy, and you can see good blocking up front, everybody hitting their, their man, and Owen Schmidt just leaving a hole, an option for him, and it's one-on-one -on -one with Schmidt. Uh, he's going to win every time. Nice. Pick up on the play. Good quick move for a first down on the sweep Steve that Slayton time here. by Steve Slayton. He'll get five more. And the Mountaineers will move the change. Corey Flom, the nose guard, made the tackle for Western Michigan. The Broncos down by two touchdowns. First down, West Virginia. And here they go. They call it the Jet. Schmidt, Slayton, Jala, Gonzalez, Raynaud all in there at the same time. Schmidt lines up in the more normal fullback position in the I formation. They have so many options. Here's the handoff. Room up the middle for Slayton. Goodbye. He is gone. You're not going to catch Slayton. Five touchdowns. He's Slayton. A burst up the middle. When he got about five yards past the line of scrimmage, Renee, you knew they were not going to catch him. He's running downhill, and with that 4-3-6 speed, he puts separation for the defensive backs. Also credit outstanding blocking up front, and that triple option. Look, that hole, John, you and I could have run through it. And uh, Steve Slayton just running away from the competition. No one's going to catch him. It's third score of the game, and boy, I tell you what, they just keep coming at you with everything they have. Now they're up with the lead now to 35 to 14. And did you notice at the finish of that run that he moved the ball into his right arm, which he couldn't do last year, and <laughs> took it in for the touchdown with that nicely repaired wrist. So he's healthy, that's for sure. A 58-yard touchdown run. Slayton for the Mountaineers breaks loose. 35-14, still 9.54 left in the third quarter. We welcome you back to Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Mountaineers have just scored their fifth touchdown. And we're happy to be joined by the man in the middle, Don Nealon, longtime coach here. John, it's great to see you. Thanks, John. Nice to be here. I tell you what, uh, lest you think this uh, success is newfound, you had teams that played for the national championship yourself, right? Right. We had a chance. Uh, actually, we played four twice. One, once it would have been right out. The other one would have been uh, co-champions, but we blew both games. <laughs> well, sometimes that happens. But yeah. uh, the newfound success, I know, as now that you've retired, you've got to be enjoying what's happening here in Morgantown. Oh, yeah. we got a great football team. I'll tell you, this Pat White kid and this Steve Slayton, I don't mind telling you, they can flat out get it done. Did you ever have anybody as fast as those two guys? I, Adrian Morrell, my tailback, uh, may have been as fast as these guys, but I, I'm not real sure. I know we <laughs> never had a quarterback as fast as Pat White. Obviously not. All right, back to action. The kickoff, the Mountaineers have just scored touchdown number five. We'll get, coach, we'll get you a chair here. Okay. Appreciate you stopping by, take getting off the golf course. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Mountaineers coaches have gotten the job done. They haven't, that was the, a great play. They just ran right there up the middle, and that's where Slayton gets the chance to show his speed and what he can do. Yeah, well, that's an inside zone play, John, and, you know, everybody leads to their right, and when that seam opens up, he's got the speed to break it right through there. First uh, down and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Broncos. And Don, they had a nice drive, did uh, Western Michigan, right before halftime, kind of got themselves back in the ballgame. 
Western Michigan's a pesky bunch, I'll tell you that. But uh, I don't think they have the speed to hang with us. Hiller gets outside the 25, maybe the 26-yard uh, line, a gain of six. You know, the coach, uh, Coach, uh, one thing that's impressed me is as much trouble defensively as the Mountain has had last year. They look pretty good. They run to the ball well, and it looks like the guys with experience, it's really paid off this year. Oh, I think their defense is solid. I, you know, even last year, the, our only problem, we had trouble stopping the pass because we couldn't get a pass rush. But our basic set is a three-man line, and it's hard to rush the passer with just three guys. They're doing more blitzing now. I think we're going to do it there again. But they might have jumped off that time. We'll see what the call is. Right, I'm sure you're right. Well, the other thing that's happened is that David Hardesty has left as president, and I know he was, he's been here. He was a West Virginia grad, and he's been here a long time as well. Right, he was a great Mountaineer fan, too, I'll tell you that. It's, uh, it was, you know, it's amazing, John, what's happened at West Virginia, in my opinion. You know, when I came here and in December of 1979, they were known as one of the 10 worst football teams in America, and none of this was here. Right. Well, and, and people said you can't recruit to Morgantown, right? Right. And uh, we were able to get this stadium built and put the weight rooms in and the locker rooms and and then wrap it around and big scoreboard and everything. And uh, right now we can recruit with anybody in America. Well, that was the 11th penalty on the Broncos sets him back to a second and long they go from the shotgun Hiller looking has time throws that's going to be intercepted he overthrew the receiver it's picked off by Reed Williams and Williams gets down close to the 20 yard line the second interception third turnover of the ball game for the Broncos and you had a middle linebacker dropping deep in that zone coverage and did an outstanding job coming with an interception Reed Williams and uh, Coach, you know, the thing is, we talked earlier about the recruiting, and you just touched on it. Uh, Coach Rodriguez did such a great job recruiting in Pennsylvania and Florida, and he's record, uh, rewarded the walk-ons. 26 walk-ons have gotten scholarships in the last five years, and he's got a good blend of blue-collar guys and superstars. No question about it. They've done a great job recruiting. The big thing they've been able to recruit is speed. They got a lot of kids on this program that can run. They even have a couple of kids we haven't seen much of this afternoon, a couple of freshmen who can fly. Right. And Devine and Sanders. They're both really quick kids. I've watched them in practice. Some pressure, but all alone, and it's going to be overthrown. I think maybe the pressure that was coming up the middle that time, Slayton was the intended receiver, but they got good pressure up the middle, and White had to unload before he wanted to. On that, on that play, John, they isolate Slayton on an inside linebacker, and that's a mismatch. Yeah, it is. There's no way on the... I don't, I'm don't. i sure there's anybody in the white jersey that's not a mismatch yeah. for Slayton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, you're right. Uh, Pat had somebody in his face or he'd have got him the ball. It'll be second down and 10. The ball is at the 22-yard line following the interception. Mountaineers trying to open it up now here in the third quarter. White on the run. Steps through. 10-5. See ya. Well, Don, there are two Heisman Trophy candidates down there on the field, and they are doing nothing to disappoint with the way they're playing this afternoon. Oh, you're not kidding. I'm not sure it's good to have two on the same team because I got a feeling that could hurt you, but... Those two kids are both really good football players. And you know, not only are they good football players, they're good citizens, they're good guys. You know, he showed a lot of patience in this right now, waiting for his block. A lot of guys, and I know coach, when you coached here, you know, young freshmen get here and guys, and they just want to get out and run, and they have to learn to be patient, read the blocks and stuff, and Pat White has really become an exceptional runner, and he's shown he can pass the ball as well. Oh yeah, he, I'll tell you right now, I watch him in practice, he can throw the football big time. All There's right, no we're gonna take a break it. right now, Don. You stick around, we'll be with you when we come back. Mountaineers have opened it up, 42 to 14, 839 to play. The offensive explosion of the tandem of White and Slayton continues. Mountaineers in control. Quick work for Rich Rodriguez crew. They've scored two touchdowns in the last one minute and 15 seconds. They'll be kicking off again. And Don Nealon is still here. Former head coach of the Mountaineers, who's still enjoying things in Morgantown. How are you occupying your time now, coach? 
Well, you know, John, I'm the spokesman for the West Virginia Coal Association, and I have a lecture series at the university, and last uh, fall I even taught a class, and I play a little golf, and there's a construction company down in Bridgeport that I kind of monkey around with at times, and I just seem to have plenty to do. Isn't there a little golf course down in Bridgeport, too? They might build one, another one. <laughs> what is the Pete Dye Club? You don't yeah. play there, do you? Oh, yeah, I go there. <laughs> All right, the kickoff is on its way. Brandon West will handle it to five. He's got good speed, got a little room. West will get outside the 30, close to the 35-yard line before he's wrestled down. Well, I know you've seen a lot of changes. This is the 28th year for this excellent facility that they built the suites down at that one end, uh, closing up an area that used to have bleachers there. They lost a few seats in the process, but I think what they've got here is a 60,000-seat stadium that's perfect for them. Oh, there's no question. And this touchdown terrace, uh, you know, it's it's almost like being there with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and, uh, you know, they're going to put more boxes here in, the, yeah, in front of that. the weight room. 23 touchdown drives. You see, they can score in a hurry. They're also going to redo the weight rooms and the locker rooms after the season is over. That's down at the other end of Mountaineer Field. Got a new quarterback coming into the game. That is Thompson carried and Paragon. Thomas Paragon is the new quarterback. Don, we want to thank you so much for taking time out to stop by. I know you've got things to do. And next week is the Friends of Coal game right, right down right. In, uh, in Huntington. Yeah. Marshall's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember you played Marshall, and you yeah. were in trouble early in that yeah. ball game. <laughs> yeah. They had Pennington and Moss then. <laughs> That's exactly right. They don't have Pennington and Moss now. <laughs> I know. Don, thanks again. Yep. We'll see you. We appreciate thanks. it. Take care. Right. Thank you, Coach. Don Nealon, longtime coach of the Mountaineers of West Virginia, very successful coach. A guy that really built this program up, had success with the bowl games, played twice for the national championship. And a jewel in the coaching ranks. Don. Absolutely. Yeah, a jewel in the coaching ranks. I tell you, though, he looks more relaxed now than, <laughs> than he did then. Oh, well, he did a great job, and he, he set the standard. I'd say he set the bar pretty high. In the coaching ranks. Perrigan is the quarterback. Thompson the running back. Perrigan throws. Catch is made right at the first down marker. And we're going to have some new people in there. That again is Jamarco Simmons. He has really been a workhorse. This is that his tenth catch. He picked up nine on the play and he got a first down. And remember, he had 13 grabs for 172 yards against the Bearcats of Cincinnati in the bowl game last year. So he's fast approaching that uh, personal mark. Move it out to the 45, first down 10. Again, Thompson, the lone setback. And getting outside again is Jamarco Simmons. Paragon's pass complete. So Paragon going to Simmons. Right on the play. There is a flag on the play. 11 catches. Number 41 on the defense. And the 15 yard dead ball in. foul is called First on West Virginia's Eric Wicks, one of the returning veterans out of Perry High School in Pittsburgh. And by the way, the other defender, Ryan Mundy, who came from Michigan, Michigan shockingly losing today, is also from Pittsburgh. And part of the reason he came here is to get closer to home. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, he's going to be a great addition, Mundy is, to this defense. 6'1", 205, big physical hitter. Uh, you know, something about Perrigan here, he's a pure passer, played in a uh, run-oriented ori Juco, but uh, he's got a stronger arm than Hiller, and I think you can look for him to air it out quite a bit. And he once again goes to his favorite receiver, DeMarco Simmons, with his 12th catch. But that's a no-gainer right there, or a very little gain on the play. Holmes and Williams teamed up defensively. Gain of, three. Gain of three on the play. Think about Perrigan. In 2006, he, had, he led the uh, Broncos in wins over Toledo and Virginia. So he's uh, he's tasted success here and with Western Michigan. He is having a great afternoon. There's still plenty of time to go. We just passed the midway point. Once again, it's West. Russell down as he gets inside the 30. Within about a yard or two, he'll pick up five on the play, and it'll be a third down and two. Mountaineers very much in control as they scored quickly in a minute and 19 seconds, putting two touchdowns on the board. You know, I'm very impressed with the fact that Western Michigan has not given up here, trailing now by a 42-14 score, and got a lot of fight in them still. It is Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. I'm John Sanders along with Renee Nato, and that time Paragon is going to pick up the first down himself. 
Johnny Holmes makes the tackle. He picks up three, 626 to play as they will stop the clock and move the change. And Paragon, he has some experience. He's out of Sparks, Nevada, and Bluefield Junior College. He's a senior now. Johnny Holmes just made that last tackle. John, and how bad would your luck be? He sprained both ankles against Cincinnati last year. What do you do? I don't know. <laughs> One ankle is bad, but two is unbelievable. And you get two large people to carry you around, I guess. <laughs> Perrigan going to be hit from behind and dropped. Dropped on the play. He took the hit. Sacked on the play. Glover was right there. A uh, loss of three on that sack. Moves the ball back outside the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the thing is, the Mountaineers only recorded nine sacks all the year. Nine sacks since they're off to a pretty good start. Good pressure on the quarterback here. And Glover did a good job with the pressure and keeping Perrigan inside the box. But as Don Nealon said, if you play a three-man front a lot of the time, you're not going to make, make that many sacks. You're going to have enough bodies. But they will show blitz. And they're coming here. Thrown away, incomplete. Richardson was there. And Slavonic was applying the pressure as he came right up the middle. He's going to come out now. So it is fourth down play. Not much the Broncos can do at this point when you trail by 28, except go for it. Well, he's lucky that last pass was not intercepted. The closest one to it was cornerback Kent Richardson. In a blue jersey, so they live to fight. It's uh, third well, it's, down. It is third down. I was thinking it was fourth down. It's third down. They're four of 11 on third down plays. They will go out of the shotgun. Thomas Perrigan running the offense. That is caught inbounds by Ledbetter. And Ledbetter was alone over there. A 20 yard pickup, a big play by. Paragon going to Ledbetter, who makes another catch. He is an outstanding tight end. Well, he was in single coverage with Charles Pugh, but he runs that deep out, and he's got outstanding hands, concentration, knows where the sideline is, and you can see Paragon delivers the ball only where the tight end can catch it. Has one foot in bounds, and that's just an outstanding uh, throw and catch. First and goal from about the six-yard line. And it did look like the defender, Pugh, fell down yes. on the play. That's why he was so wide open. Peregrine under the gun, completes the touchdown pass. Terrific job as he goes to his favorite man. Simmons gets in the end zone. And the Western Michigan Broncos come right back after being shocked by a couple of quick touchdowns here in the third quarter. A six-yard touchdown pass. Holmes on the hit. And he, he took a blitz here and right he took there. a big hit and stayed strong in the pocket, finds his mark. And, boy, Jamarco Simmons, he is really, uh, he might be a Blitnikoff candidate before this is all over. Well, he has had a terrific afternoon. So the kick will come from Mike Jones. The extra point attempt. This one is up and good. Kick is good. Well, it's going to be 42 to 21. They kept that lead back to 21 points. And I tell you what, there's no quit in these Broncos. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know, Cuban is not going to be happy maybe with the score, but the fact that they came back and fought real strong, no quit, uh, no giving up here, and, uh, you know, pretty formidable opponent in West Western Virginia. Well, West Virginia, the number three ranked team in the country. And we told you Michigan already lost today at home to Appalachian State. That was a, wow, that's a shock <laughs> early season here. It may take us a while to recover from that one, huh? <laughs> well, here's another look. There's the pressure. He just got the ball up. I'm not sure he even saw the receiver, except the receiver was running the route where he was supposed to be. And he just delivered the ball at that spot. It's a spot pass. And, boy, I tell you, he, really, he was paid for that touchdown toss. The Mountaineers will receive the kickoff. 5-14 to play. We're in the third quarter. Rodriguez always coaching. Bill Kubitsch's team has put 21 on the board against the Mountaineers. But you know, they averaged, West Virginia averaged 40 points a game in the last half of the season. And in some of the preseason talk, the quarterback Patrick White said, I'd like to score 50 points a game. <laughs> well, <laughs> they have the potential to do it. They, well, you know, they've certainly shown they've flexed their muscles here. And, you know, with 42 points and five minutes and 14 seconds to go in the third stanza, John. They's, wow, they, and they still have a lot of gas in the tank. This is Raynaud who'll have it. Comes straight up the middle. He's got some room. Raynaud with a one-quick move gets to the 50. 
Duco made the tackle, but Raynaud showing his speed with a good punt, uh, kickoff return, and he gives good field position. A 37-yard kick return. He has tremendous explosion. We talk about the trio of Pat White, Slayton, and Raynaud. Raynaud negotiates to 40 and 4.46. Has a 41-inch vertical and has a team high 695 squat. Tremendous explosion and uh, body control. Raynaud, uh, he may find him playing the next level on Sundays next year. Well, the man that he really deked on the play was the kicker, so that's, that doesn't count, right? <laughs> well, good blocking on special teams. You're right, but it's... It's still a body, and he got through the hole. And yeah, he got through it big time. Slayton squeezes for a couple down to about the 46-yard line, maybe the 47, three-yard pickup. But he broke the big one. And White has done his part. These two have been very productive. We'll be showing you some graphics later to show the combination of offense that they've been able to produce. It'll be second down and seven. The offensive line has done a great job, John, this afternoon and kind of control that line of scrimmage over the uh, Bronco defense and really did a good job. You know, we'll talk about how uh, you really have to be a, a blue-collar guy to play offensive line anywhere, and uh, no one does it better than West Virginia. Slayton has a wide receiver. Schmidt stays in as the fullback to block, and White is in trouble. Goes short. Boy, that guy was all alone. If he'd had a little more time to straighten up, They'd have been able to get to Tito Gonzalez because he was alone over there because the defenders came up when it looked like White was going to run the football. And White improvised a little bit, bought some time, broke the uh, contain and, and got on the outside. He maybe could have ran, but he saw Tito Gonzalez open and hoping to complete a long pass. But you see, just buying time, and this is just patience, not throwing the ball too soon, just improvising, moving around. He's a tough target to hit. And uh, maybe another three or four yards on that toss had been complete. Raynaud, Gonzalez, Jal of the wideouts. Schmidt is the fullback. Slayton has gone all the way at tailback. Here comes the blitz. And he gets away from it. Up the middle. 40. Drag from behind. Stays on his feet. Gets inside the 35. Richard finally made the tackle. Boy, they had the pressure coming on the blitz that time, and White beat it. 16-yard pickup for the West Virginia quarterback. That's the mark of a mature quarterback. He just... He doesn't panic. He sees the, the blitz coming and just finds a crease. Good broken field running here, and he breaks this tackle. He may take it to the house. There was no one between him and the end zone. But they were finally able to drag him down, as Pritchard did. Grab him by the shoulder pads. The ball is at the 35-yard line. It's first down and 10, 350 remaining. And look at these numbers. 197 total. He's accounted for four touchdowns. Again, the blitz. There's the throw. There's the incomplete pass intended for Schmidt. And that was not an easy pass to catch. A little bit behind him, a little bit high, and Schmidt could not hang on. And, and he can be, you know, a number of positions at the next level, tight end, fullback, whatever it may be, and he usually catches the ball. And that is a very tough catch to make. 6'3", 260-pound Owen Schmidt may be a, a tight end H-back in the NFL. And, Negotiates to 40 and a 4.57. That's unbelievable. We mentioned he's a strength All-American, and you know he's got a cult following down here. Has a sports and mohawk under that helmet, and you know he's oh he's got a great following. Yeah. You go outside, you'll see jerseys number five and ten all over the place, with a bunch of 35s mixed in there as well. That pass is incomplete. It was intended for Gonzalez, but Tito could not hang on, so it'll be third down and ten coming up. Sosnovich applying the pressure defensively and right now they they had the, the, the wide receivers of Reynard Gonzalez Sowers and also playing a wide out right now is Slate we haven't seen a young freshman divine and uh, no and we expected to five wide outs on third down and ten ball at the 35 yard line of the Broncos again the blitz there's the pass incomplete and that's going to be pass interference the fans were calling for it before the flag hit the ground <laughs> well he, he ran a seam route and Slayton was going to beat the defensive back he just reached out and grabbed him and I guess it's better to, to get a penalty and you live to fight another day if he gives up that play it's another touchdown and Slayton had beat them now there's yellow all over this end of the field which is now basically in the shadows Pass interference, number 21 on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first time. Antoine Allen is the guilty party, number 21, and 
I tell you, in his defense, you try to stay with Steve Slayton, and that's a tough task. Coach Cubitt will not get mad at a, a play like that because, if anything, if you let him go, he'd yell at you. But, uh, you know, if he holds on to him, at least he has a chance to, to fight another day. And Slayton, if not, he's we're kicking an extra point. Now, 12th penalty on the Broncos, 87 total yards. The ball is spotted at the 19. Schmidt moves to a wide receiver in this formation. Got him in the slot on the right side. Four wide outs. Slayton in the backfield with White. There's the inside handoff, and Slayton leads inside the 15 down to maybe the 14 yard line before he's dropped by Allen. Well, Pat White, when he gets in this part of the field, is pretty darn good. 29 out of 46 for touchdowns. You add that there, and it's going to be 43 times out of 46. You get some kind of point out of it, and that's that's very good. Yeah, well, you know, he's scoring touchdowns, not field goals, and that's the thing. When you get in the red zone, you want to get the maximum, and he does quite that, and, boy, I tell you, he's, he's a complete quarterback. Second down and five. Same formation. Same play. Slayton's got room. Five. Dragged down at the one-yard line. Gebhardt was able to get him before he got to the end zone, but it looked like he was heading that way for another touchdown. He's got that afterburner, another gear, and Slayton just explodes when he gets to the second level. You can see right here, get an inside handoff. And he, good vision, good cut right there off the block, and leaves a defender grab, grabbing for air and uh, gets down to the one-yard line. Good tackle, but he's got tremendous explosion. Gets to the second level so quickly. Schmidt is in the normal fullback position in the eye. And the blocking back in front of Slayton. Guess who has the ball? Slayton trying to sneak in, go underneath, and he could not get there. No gain. Gebhardt makes the hit. Anthony Gebhardt's playing pretty good here in the second half for the Western Michigan Broncos out of Kalamazoo. Slate with uh, 15 totes for 101 yards and Patrick White 9 for 97. <laughs> what a hey, that's happened double, many times, hasn't it? Double dose of dynamite, John. It's fun to watch him. Again, Schmidt is the fullback. Second and goal. No problem. Slayton's into the end zone again. So Slayton scores again. Mountaineers move it out to 48-21. Great block from Owen Schmidt. They try yep. to come over the top, but he opens that hole. And again, great blocking, good surge on the offensive line, and Dent and company from the center position did a great job of giving him a crease to get into the end zone. That's good to give credit, though, to Owen Schmidt, because he was not going to let them close that hole. No. That's, he blocks like an offensive lineman. Less than two remaining third quarter. Slayton is on the board. It's 49-21 with a minute and 59 to play in the third quarter. Look at that blocking up front. Good, good block, and the damage is already done once he got the ball and knows for the end zone. You see Slayton again scoring his Schmidt. Good surge on the offensive line. Great camera work right there, and Slayton with his third touchdown. Wow. And, you know, his Patrick White and Slayton are roommates, but when, a, uh, when Slayton went to the uh, Playboy All-American shooting, he... He roomed with uh, Darren McFadden. It's kind of interesting. Boy, what kind of talent they had in that room. Well, that's the fourth touchdown for Slayton. He's got 24 points himself. Yeah. More than the Broncos as a team. But, you know, we expected to see this kind of an offensive show, and we're seeing it. You know, they have, uh, they're in mid-season form, and, and to be this good this early in the season. And, you know, Western Michigan, again, could be the chalk of the MAC. And, That's right. Uh, so they, they're doing it against a pretty good team. And we mentioned when we had Don Nealon up here that the next game will be at Marshall for West Virginia. The Friends of Cole Bowl will be played down there. And Joe Manchin, who is the governor, will join us in the fourth quarter. But he's been the instrumental in setting up that rivalry between Marshall and West Virginia on a regular basis. Next up for the Broncos of Kalamazoo, they'll be at home next Saturday to Indiana. Then they play at Missouri. So that is not an early, easy, uh, early, an easy early season schedule is what I'm trying to say for Western Michigan. Mountaineers 5-1 when uh, White and Slayton exceed the 100-yard mark. And they've done that this evening. 
Brandon West will be the deep man for the Broncos. McAfee will kick off. At the one yard line. Ridden down hard and a flag comes in. That was Glover who made the hit on the special teams, but we also have a flag on the play. Flag on the play. 23-yard return. Got it out across the 20 to the 24. And we're still checking the flag. On the return. Number 23. Holding. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Nick Sad is the First guilty down. party there, picking up the penalty on the holding call, and that's kind of been the story of this afternoon from time to time. They'll do something good and then get a penalty or get themselves shot in the foot. Well, and you know, and I guess they'll iron those things out, but those are the kind of things you do not want to have against a team such as West Virginia. They'll make it pay for it. Well, 16 rushes, 109 yards for Steve Slayton. What new? 19 games he's played, and he's rushed for 100 yards or more in 16 of those games. We still have a minute 53 remaining here in the third quarter. Thompson will be the running back. Paragon, who is playing the second half, Paragon will be the quarterback. Two wide out formation. Martin and Jamarco Simmons. And that's straight ahead running that time by Thompson. And this will pick up a couple of yards into the middle of that defensive line. Four yard pickup. West James Ingram made the tackle. West Virginia employing that uh, four-man front, so they've changed things a little bit and kind of keep, you know, keeping the Broncos kind of off uh, kilter a little bit. And uh, Ingram, we've called his name many times. Dingle, we've also called him. And Dingle was a uh, highly recruited guy for the Florida Gators, signed with Florida, left, left the Gators and uh, went to a junior co college and came headed to West Virginia. They're going to nail him for another sack. In the backfield that time, Morty Ivey from Monroeville, Pennsylvania, in the Pittsburgh area, able to pick up a sack for the Mountaineers. And Morty knocks him all the way back inside the 15 again, back to the original line of scrimmage, a loss of four. And here comes Ivey on the blitz. You're right. 6'3, 235. He hurt his knee in a spring, came back, uh, and really looks good. Looks at midseason form, great acceleration, just a junior. And he had six stops against the Pitt Panthers last two years ago, and it looks like he could be a great future here for the Mountaineers. Peregrine with a quick handoff. Thompson will get a couple yards back, and that's about it. Thompson. Slavonic and Murrow, a couple of those down linemen, make the tackle for the West Virginia. And some of the second team players are seeing some action now for the young men from Morgantown. 49 21, they've got the lead. Von Rivers will be deep to receive the punt. You can see the shadows creeping ever farther across the field here in Morgantown. Just hit a shot at Morrow. Thor Morrow, his dad, played for West Virginia. Also played uh, eight years, nine years for the Atlanta Falcons. But his dad still holds the record with 15 tackles for losses in 1973. That record still stands. His dad, Jeff Morrow. Well, we will head to the fourth quarter. Governor of the fine state of West Virginia, Joe Manchin, will join us. He'll talk about that Friends of Cold Bowl and more. It's 49-21. White, Slayton doing their thing for the Mountaineers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back once again to Morgantown. We're heading into the fourth quarter of play, and it is a great honor for us to be joined upstairs here in the booth by Governor Joe Manchin who is so very much a part of this organization here. And, of course, in Marshall, too, because one of the things we're going to talk about, Governor, is that Friends of Cold Bowl that's coming up next it's week. It's going to be a great, great event, yes. really a great event, especially a great event for uh, Huntington, the city of Huntington, Capital County, and really all of West Virginia. This is a, this is a game that's a win-win for the state of West Virginia. And you're the man responsible well, for a lot of that. Uh, just a lot of people have been wanting to see this game, and Marshall's earned the right to play, and they've done a great job. And Coach Pruitt took them to another level, and... Uh, we're just uh, happy we finally have it behind us now, and we're all ready for another uh, six more years. There you go. Well, we're looking forward to that. Sit down and join us a little bit, and we'll talk some football here and talk some improvements. One of the things that Don Nealon talked about when he was here, Governor, was the, the fact how much this place has changed in the 28 years that it's been in existence. There have been a lot of improvements. I was, uh, and of course, I started back in 1965 uh, playing freshman ball at WVU at the old stadium. 
So when this stadium was conceived in 1979, 1980, everybody thought, my goodness, we used to play golf here. There used to be a part three golf course through here. So uh, we thought, I don't know if that's going to work. I'm, you know, just all of a sudden we go from 35 to 60 or 70,000 seats. And my goodness, uh, Coach Lee didn't come in and took it to another level. A nice hand because of the change offensively for West Virginia. And the highly touted Noel Devine is on the field. So we'll see what these freshmen can do. <laughs> Nobody I guess only ones I got. <laughs> more attention than Devine and Sanders. And he'll get a carry. And if you've ever watched YouTube, that was Sanders on the carry that time. You'll see a lot of Noel Devine, that's for sure. Governor, I'm from New Orleans, and I know Rich Rodriguez when he was at Tulane. And success, I had a chance to say hi to him yesterday. Success has not changed him. A formal walk-on, and he's done an outstanding job with this program, and he seems to love where he is. Well, let me just tell you the whole thing with Rich. Uh, I've known Rich since he was a young, a young person. He worked for us in the carpet store. We gave him all the toughest, dirtiest jobs. He did every one of them. Never complained. He's still working hard. And Nick Saban, my very, very, very close friend, uh, we lived two, all of us lived two miles apart. So Nick grew up on this side of the town. I grew up in Farmington, and Rich was from, uh, from Grant Town. And so I know a little bit about uh, the LSU Tigers and, and uh, all that great tradition down there. Well, Eddie Davis made the catch on the pass from Jarrett Brown, getting a chance to play here in the fourth quarter. Mountaineers have certainly done their thing. And checking back into the lineup is Jock Sanders along with Devine. What about the Friends of Coal Bowl? Uh, how does that work? And you said it's a big event for the city of Huntington. Uh, I know that for many years those two teams didn't play and West Virginia really felt that it was a no-win situation for them to play Marshall, but you've changed that. Well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm a uh, WVU alumni, as you know, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of hardcore alumni that believe that it's not a win-win for us. You know, we play them in basketball and we've proven that's a tremendous right. financial success. When the 12th game was added, John, uh, I knew that uh, to be a financial success, uh, it, it, WVU and Marshall should be playing, and uh, it has proved, uh, has proved very beneficial for both. As you can see, whoever wins the first two out of three gets the fourth game at home. But well, wasn't that always one of the <laughs> hang-ups as to how many games were we going to be played in each stadium? That was a critical battle that you had to take care of. That was the final hang-up, okay? We kept locking. I kept them in the mansion all day that day. <laughs> they started with breakfast and went right through lunch and was going to dinner. And I said, guys, we've got to finish this up. And, and Ed passed along, tremendous friend of mine and a great guy. And, and K.O. Markham, they're just class act, and they, they worked it out. And then we talked to them, they said, we're down to this. We can't decide, uh, West Virginia believes we should have three of the four games. Right. And Marshall says, well, at least you, you, you know, we should have two out of two. Let's be, you know, they right. went. So they said, well, how, where I come from in Farmington, West Virginia, two out of three usually takes it. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's a good plan. Now, I remember I talked to Don Nealon years ago when they played, and, uh, uh, they put a big scare in uh, West Virginia because they took like a 21 to nothing lead right here in this stadium, and then the Mountaineers roared back and beat them. I mean, they, they're, they've got a quality uh, program. They're working hard, and Mark Snyder is a good young coach, and uh, Bobby Pruitt just, uh, like I said, took it to another level. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a tremendous rivalry. We watched it in basketball. Well, I've enjoyed that rivalry. Those games are always great down there. I've done it like eight or nine straight well, years. They beat us the one year we went to the six week 16. Right. They beat us the next year That's we went right. to Elite Eight. Two and I said, well, if they beat us last year, we'd have been the national champion. <laughs> you know, speaking of national championship, Governor, we uh, we have the national championship in the Superdome this year. And the uh, way this team is playing, you got two Heisman hopefuls, but we may see the Mountaineers in the Superdome January 7th. Uh, Rich has done a tremendous job uh, with this team, and his staff needs to be commended because they've worked hard to get to this level. But you said, you know something, this is what Rich always believed always believed he'd be at this level he he, he just knew it and i remember when uh, they talked to him first to try to uh, coach Nina decided to retire and who was going to be his successor and uh, of course i'm partial to a west virginian because you have to know this state and you you have to have the love that we all have for our state and rich had all of those ingredients and especially being a alumni made it even sweeter so he said we'll be we'll be playing for national championship and i believe him well, you know, I've been there down in uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans and everything else, a celebration, and, you know, the support here is fabulous. I'm just very impressed coming away. First time I've been here, Governor, and <laughs> very impressed with the support here and the excitement and the enthusiasm of this crowd. Well, WU fans are very proud of this team and they're proud There's of Noel them. Devine. That's what they came to see. He's got a first down. Wow. 
That outstanding freshman, Noel Devine, Jock Sanders is in there. That's a 20-yard pickup for Noel Devine out of the pass by Jarrett Brown, the backup. And this is what you talked about, Governor, a little bit. You can see White and Slayton are tremendous, but there's some other kids that are coming. So they've started the process of getting good football players. Well, how, would you like to have, how many teams would like to have that quarterback Absolutely. right now? He did a great job when Patrick was hurt last year. Oh, my year. goodness. Look at Noel Devine. What numbers he had in high school, oh, John. scary. Wow, 92 touchdowns. Jared Brown. Jared Brown lost the handle on that and had to take a knee. But this program here, and again the one in Marshall as well, uh, can make us all very proud of football in the state of West Virginia. It really does. And it, it's just taken the whole, uh, the whole scholastic uh, to another level also. And, and I just, uh, I'm just so, so proud. And I tell them, I mean, I'm proud of the academics and uh, our students, how well they do. But... Uh, the exposure that we receive as a state from uh, these uh, broadcasts, and you all have done such a great job for us, and we appreciate it. It gives us the exposure that I think West Virginia needs, and it, it really has a different perception of who we are, and that it really helps an awful lot. Here's Devine. There we go. Trying to get to the edge. And that's what he did in high school. He could bounce back up. He'll get only two. Noel Devine, one of the most highly touted running backs in the country. Now watch some of this. It's almost unbelievable what this kid does. It looked like they have him at a different speed than everyone else. And, you know, he's about a 4-3 sprinter. You know, they say it might be interesting to see a foot race between Slayton and Devine, but he just he has another gear. Look at this, another gear just pulls away from everyone. Great move right there. You can't slow him down. You may slow him down a little bit, but, you know, he's uh, he's really loves it here. And from everyone thought he was going to Florida State, but uh, Fort Myers, Florida. But he seems to love it here, and, they, and Rick Henry is sure glad he... He's a Mountaineer. Brown trying to get away from some pressure. And he's going to pick up a first down. It's down to the 25-yard line. Well, you talked about it. A lot of people would like to have Brown as their quarterback. He's right? so strong. I was so impressed in Louisville last year when he had to come in. Uh, Rutgers, I'm sorry. First down, West Virginia. You know, the thing about Jared Brown is, you know, he's learned his fundamentals from Adam Bednarik, but he's learned his reads and, and how to run a, an offense from Patrick White. And, People think he's very similar to a Vince Young in skills and good size and tremendous arm, 6'4", 220. But the character of these young men is unbelievable, and I've been around them for a few years. They just work with each other, and they always root for each other. Very competitive, but they're always together as a team, and that's really what makes them special. Noel Devine will get a couple more as he gets inside the 25 Devine down to about the 23-yard line. Not much there. Clock continues to roll, 9.43 remaining in the ballgame, dominated by West Virginia. They have 49 points on the board and looking for more with primarily second unit players in there right now. You know, the good thing about this is these two freshmen, Jock Sanders and no Noel Devine, pull for each other very hard. Yeah. And, and freshmen are going to get better, Governor. You know, the thing is, usually a freshman such as a Noel Devine or Jock Sanders, when they get here, they go back, revert back to their high school skills. But as they learn to read, use their vision, they become much, much better. And, you, you know, the ceiling is a limit for these guys. Well, the that, bottom line is a limit. Sanders on the carry. That was Jock Sanders that time picking him a few yards inside the 20 or down to the 20-yard line. When you have that many quality backs, when you have quarterbacks that can run as well as a back, and then you have the talent we have in the backfield, you know, we're going to put a lot of points on the board. Well, plus West Virginia's going to put a lot of points on the board this year. Well, they averaged at the end of last year about 40 <laughs> points a game. We need every one of them, too. <laughs> well, that's true. At times you do. That's for sure. And it's great to see the young freshman out there around the second team quarterback, Jared Brown. Look at there. There it, there is. it is. Right up the middle. Brown will score the touchdown. 20 yard run. Jared Brown from West Palm Beach, Florida. Keyed that overtime win that you were talking about, Governor, against Rutgers. But the sophomore takes it in the end zone himself. Guy had 244 yards. Watch, watch how strong he is. The fake throws Look the defense a little bit, and he well, just he's using his running skills yeah. here. But that's a big boy. That's not, I mean, that's a big boy right there. And he can run hard, and he's a tough-nosed kid, too. Well, he's 6'4", 220-pounder. <laughs> he almost stumbled a little bit, but still maintained his balance and got it in the end zone. Um, he's really a class act. I mean, he's going to be tremendous. Joe Manchin, we thank you John, very thank much. John, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Good luck. Go, Continue. Thank you for doing a great job for West Virginia. We appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Governor. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Thank you all. Mountaineers have opened it up 56 to 21. Everybody getting on the act. Brown, watch him slip just a little. <laughs> he fooled the cameraman. Thought he was going to give it to the freshman. <laughs> Takes it in himself. 56-21. Stay with us. 
For the fifth time under Coach Rodriguez, West Virginia has scored 56 or more points, so they are very capable of doing that. Let's take another look. Good fake because he faked out our people. Zone read right Whoops. here. It's, he it doesn't have the ball, does he? Took everyone with him, and that was a great fake that absorbs. Jock San Sanders took everyone with him, and Jared Brown dances in the end zone. Five freshmen played skill positions on the last drive. Divine Sanders, wide receivers Davis Hogan and Will Johnson. What a future. Took it into the end zone for a score. Fifty six twenty one. Not even midway through the fourth quarter yet. You know the thing about you put the second teamers in there and they're going to want to score too. And let that one roll all the way back to West and he has trouble with it. And West is going to be tied up at about the 17 yard line a five yard return. And that's going to be it. And I give uh, Brandon West some credit. He's been in on a lot of plays today. Allen and Glover were down there on the special teams for West Virginia. About a rushing comparison. Of course, there's been a lot of passing for the Broncos, but West Virginia 268 yards. They're averaging seven yards a carry. They've rushed it 38 times, just uh, over one yard for the Broncos. And that shows that West Virginia stepped up big, only allowing you know so many so few yards to a team that can score points, runs the ball well, and they really, really kept them in check and shut them down. It looks like a bright future in 2007 for the Mountaineers. over the middle is caught making the catch is Middleton he's a backup linebacker and he's got enough for a first down as he moves to the chains Middleton is a freshman from Deerfield Beach Florida Anthony Middleton number 88 6 4 215 pound true freshman that's one of the changes in the program a couple of years ago they had to use 14 true freshmen this year I think they're only going to play three or four. Yeah, and you know the thing is it's gotten better as it's gone along. A couple of years ago they played seven. You know, last year they played only seven. But the thing is that, you know, you don't need the freshmen or you, you don't need them to play anymore. And you just it's better to redshirt them and let them learn and experience the college atmosphere before they have to really before it really counts. Well so many of the Division 1A programs now are basically based on five year plans. Right. And uh, you know the thing is that Western Michigan when you have to play your guys just to stay competitive, but uh, you know, Coach Cubitt has done a good job bringing in really good talent and, uh, you know, saving him. And, and now he's showing the fruits of his labor. Well, Crutella, you saw the center there. He is a redshirt senior from Summit, Illinois. And, of course, Coach Cubitt worked down in Florida some. That pass is going to be incomplete. Intended for Nunez. Juan Nunez, another from South Florida. He is a freshman from Miami. Juan Nunez. You know, the thing about, you mentioned uh, Gratillo. He'll be playing on Sundays. He's a big guy, six, you know, 6'4", 300 plus 15, 320 pounds. And, you know, he calls on the line. He's been there for five years now, and he does a great job with an offensive line. And in the MAC, they're going to do well. Uh, you know, I still feel that Western Michigan is uh, can compete for that title for the MAC. is caught for a first down again it's Jamarco Simmons who is having a got to be close to a record afternoon for him he has been very very busy 12 yard pickup first down Leonard made the tackle as some of the second and third team players are in there for the Mountaineers defensively it is a first down we're at the midway point of the final quarter and and Perrigan Flashes of brilliance here, delivers the ball well, good wind up and good fundamentals. And Jamarco Simmons, I mean, you just have to be impressed. He continues to get open and great hands and reads that defense pretty well as a wide receiver. 14 catches, 144 yards for him. That one is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end. And that's Joel Workman, a tight end, his freshman tight end. We just talked about Middleton, a freshman. Now we have another freshman here. Things look very promising. He runs a seam route, and Perrigan picks him up. Beat the defense, but just uh, overshot his receiver. And, you know, with just seven minutes left here, John, they just, uh, the Broncos show no quit and really want to get back. And they're not playing like a team that's trailing 56 to 21. Well, nine touchdowns put on the board by the Mountaineers in this ballgame. Four in the first half. That pass was behind Middleton, and it's incomplete. 
and they've scored five times in the second half. But what really put the game away was when they scored twice in like a minute and 19 seconds yeah. in the third quarter. Quick strike offense, and you can expect that with the weapons that they have. You know, and they go three deep with Devine and Sanders and the wide receivers. And, of course, uh, you know, Jared Brown didn't help get hurt his cause. No. He came in and did a pretty good job. And you can see that. You know, with him coming in, it really doesn't drop off very much at all. Well, after the job he did at Rutgers, certainly they had the confidence that he could do the job. And he's ready to take over. You know, Patrick White, uh, you know, he comes in in situations. Jared Brown, you know, he's ready for the position. Loose ball and falling on it is Peregrine. And one of the things that they had indicated is that they're going to try to give, it was Cooper back there with the defensive pressure, they're going to try to give White a little more time off, a little more rest on the same for Slayton. Try to keep those guys healthy. Especially when you get into a game such as this, 56 to 21. It's uh, really, they've done their damage already and had a great afternoon. And, you know, someone else has to step up and be responsible. And, and, and you know, Coach Rodriguez likes to feel like he used a baseball analogy. If you're, if you're playing shortstop and the ball is hitting the hole, do you go to third and get the leadoff runner? If it's hit in midfield, do you go for the double play? And it's just thinking ahead and thinking out of the box and knowing what's going to happen, anticipating before the next play happens. It's the sixth punt of the afternoon for the Broncos. And Rivers is able to get away from the initial tackle. Then he lost the football, and it looks like the Broncos have got it. Well, the Mountaineers turn it over for the second time, and Rivers are trying to make a move, and sometimes, Renee, you try to do a little too much, and you lose the handle on the ball. Yeah, and he, was, he had a decent return. He tried to turn it upfield and make something out of nothing, and... Uh, he paid for it to pursue Cardamon, popped the ball loose, and, and now West, Western Michigan has pretty good field position inside the 15-yard line. Uh, Laney has done a good job. That was a 42-yard punt, and it results in a turnover. Second turnover of the afternoon for the Mountaineers. He tries to cut it back against the grain and, you know, pops the ball loose, and a lot of white jerseys around and right. comes up with it. Boston McConnell made the defensive play from behind that jarred the ball loose. That pass is caught outside the 10, quickly wrapped up on the far side of the field after a gain of three. That is Herb Martin who made the catch. But the defense was right there to make the stop. Clock continues to roll. Inside six minutes left now in the fourth quarter. Herb Martin, one of those field stretchers, great wheels. He's got uh, four or five speed and good size for a wide receiver 6-1. So he'll be a great tandem with Jamarco Simmons. Kerrigan tries to get away, and he'll get inside the 10, pick up a couple more yards, and he's wrapped up from behind. And we have a flag on the play. He picks up two yards, but a flag is down. Been impressed with the uh, defensive front. Up. with Number 88 on the offense. You know, that penalty's on Middleton. Spot, spot. Uh, once again, down. another penalty. They have had a bunch. John, I'm impressed with the way that West Virginia's defensive line has run. Scooter Berry, a, a freshman, Keelan Dykes has really plugged at that middle, and, and Johnny Dingle, a uh, senior. Uh, really, that, I think those guys are really the foundation for a good defense up front, and you mix in Magro and Reed Williams and company. And well, the numbers are good today. And just over a little over a yard per rush. Here comes some pressure. Don't they dump it off. And the first hit was made, and down he goes. And they're not going to get anything out of that play. West made the catch, but Richardson and company were there to stop it for no gain. So it's going to be third and long. And they blew up that screen pass that's being set up and uh, great penetration on the screen with Richardson and company. Stopping what could have been a hot, perhaps a touchdown. And they still hold him and digging their heels in. And West Virginia looks strong in the red zone. Five wideouts in this formation for the Broncos. It's third down. And about 12. Paragon sets, looks, throws far side, catch is made. Not enough for the first down. Juan Nunez made the catch. And both these quarterbacks, Hiller and Peregrin, uh, showing a good arm strength. As you know, that out pass is not an easy toss to make. And, you know, again, credit this West Virginia defense. They, you know, started this series inside the 15 yard line and didn't give up anything. In fact, uh, the Broncos lost a yard or two and now have to go for a field goal, so it'll be Jones. Trying to replace Nate Meyer, who did an outstanding job for Western Michigan. Jones' kick is good, so three points. They'll make it 56 to 24, and they salvage something out of the drive, plus they do some work for their special teams to make sure they can get the job done. It's 
56 24. We have just over four minutes remaining in Morgantown. The field is in shadows and the Mountaineers are on top. To be on ESPN2 and it will be in Huntington and we heard the governor talking about it. It's a great event and it's terrific for the state to get those two teams to play each other every year. So a 34 yard field goal makes it 56 to 24. And the Broncos certainly may be down in this game, <laughs> Renee, but uh, they're not quitting. No, they're not. And, and you're at, that's, uh, you have to credit them for that, and, and there's no quit in the Broncos. And I think Cuban has to be very impressed with that. They were not intimidated coming into a place such as this, playing a top-ranked team, and, and uh, they gave it all they had coming out of the short end, but uh, there were some positives. It's a bouncing kick. It's going to be fielded at the 25 by Sanders. And he's knifed down as he gets across the 35-yard line. Actually, he's got almost to the 40. So the freshman, a 14-yard return for the freshman from St. Pete, Florida, Jock Sanders. He's 5'8", 185. And you look at Devine, he's 5'8", 170. He's from North Fort Myers, Florida. So you know they knew about each other when they were in high school. That's friendly competition. They're also very hard to find. 5'8", <laughs> You know, they can hide pretty good behind these big, big linemen. And, you know, the, the offensive line for West Virginia, we talked about their zone block. They've done so well. And the offensive line position, John, is the most misunderstood. Its uh, effort is vital. It's the least known and misunderstood position. It, it must be controlled aggression. And, you know, you can tell when an offensive lineman is tired, he begins to stand up more. And uh, I tell you what, the offensive line for West Virginia has been strong all afternoon. And second team has done just as good. There's no drop off from the first unit to the second. Adam Bednarik, yes, of NFL Hall of Fame cousin Chuck Bednarik is now the quarterback. Noel Devine picked up a couple of yards. Sanders and Devine are in there at the same time. They're going to split Devine out to the right. It is Jared Brown out there. And Sanders for a first down to midfield. Eight yard pickup on the play. CJ Wilson. There's two spectacular freshmen. First down, West Virginia. Sanders with that 4 5 speed, 43 touchdowns his junior and senior year in St. Pete. And He's just running with his abilities right now, and just uh, his instincts are carrying both he and Devine. As they get a little, you know, more accustomed to this offense, they'll they'll become much, much better weapons. Alongside Jarrett Brown, Jock Sanders is the running back. Nothing there. He gets across to the 49-yard line. Brown, of course, who scored a touchdown on the last possession, dropped by Gebhardt. And I tell you what, Gebhardt's been busy in that secondary. He's made a lot of tackles. That defensive secondary has been busy for the Broncos, and they've taken a lot of hits, made some tackles, and uh, they've all they've learned quite a bit playing a team like this. Uh, I think they'll take it into the season, and they'll be a much better team in week two. Now Sam Marone has checked in for Villagrana, who was out there for one play at the tight end spot. The direct snap. Here comes the pressure. There's the pass. Good move. There's some room at the 40. It's Jock Sanders who'll pick up a first down. It's close to the 35-yard line, a 12-yard pickup by Jock Sanders. Look for a moment as Gebhardt makes the tackle again. He might go that time. Well, you know, you just get him out in space. You want to isolate him, and there's a little swing pass. And even though the defense kind of smelled it out, just to kind of, he's just got a little juke move right here as well, a little jello in his boots, and almost fumbled the ball. But, boy, he is dangerous. Get him out of space, and there's no one going to bring him down. And now it's Noel Devine back in there. And again, it was Gebhardt who made the tackle. First down. All just outside the 35-yard line. Clock continues to roll down to near two minutes. There's the speed down the sideline, the spin move. And Devine is dropped inside the 15-yard line. That's what these fans want to see. They've read about it. They've heard about it. They watched him on YouTube. They want to see him in that old golden blue. And I think you'll see that pirouette move a lot before he leaves. Morgantown. A nice little move on the outside. And they're just, they're just running the ball. You see, it's just reading with his eyes, using his vision, getting outside, using a good, nice little pirouette. Whoop, right here. Breaks the tackle, gets inside. A nice little run, and they're knocking on the door for yet another score. It is a 22 yard pickup. The ball is at the 14 yard line. First and 10. Clock inside, two minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Inside, handoff. 
Hard hit as he gets down inside the 10, Divine maybe to the 8-yard line. Again, it's Noel Devine. I know either one of those freshmen would love to score their first collegiate touchdown in the opening Special game. Timeout. And they're trying to give him a chance with <laughs> about 94 ticks to go, John. And credit the offensive line, John Bradshaw in there, and among others, and as an injured Bronco down. That is Pritchard, I believe, who's down. Second Bronco to go down in the ball game this afternoon. The Mountaineers so far have been injury free. Other than the normal bumps and bruises, at least that we know about. But sometimes you don't find out until the following day. But we do have a timeout with a minute 34 to play. West Virginia comfortably in control. Can they break the 60 barrier? We'll find out when we come back. In Huntington, West Virginia, the second in the series of games between the two teams. Mountaineers won here last year. There's more to come for West Virginia until they actually get into Big East Conference play. And, of course, that is the goal of both these teams is to get to the conference and win the conference and set yourself up for postseason. West Virginia hoping for a fifth straight year uh, playing on New Year's Day or maybe later. <laughs> well, you know, I think both these teams, obviously, it can be playing in uh, postseason play in, in bowl. And uh, West Virginia certainly has a great shot. And, Western Michigan also follow up on the uh, bowl ahead last year. Noel Devine in there with Jarrett Brown in the backfield. It is second down. About five yards to go. Now the clock has started as we head to the final minute and a half of opening day for West Virginia and Western Michigan football. Noel Devine, he's going to score. Number seven, Noel Devine, the freshman, takes it in from nine yards out. And expands the lead to 62-24. Low zone read, inside read, inside zone for Devine. And he officially eight yards on the touchdown, but it doesn't matter. He wasn't touched on the play. He read his blocks expertly. Boy, what great blocking. Good kick out right there, inside block. And that was outstanding blocking, allowing Devine a gaping hole to get into the end zone. His first collegiate touchdown. Well, playing play. briefly here, he has seven carries and 44 yards, and he just got on the field. You know, Bill Cuban, you have to, your heart goes out to him. He's come here twice, had 143 points scored against him, and only 31 points. It's, it's, it's tough. It's really tough place to play. Oof. Well, especially when you're playing a high-powered team that they have. So he took it in for the touchdown, adds to the lead. A no on the extra point, so it's 62-24 with a minute 24 remaining. And the Mountaineer and the cheerleaders doing the push-ups are going to be pooped when this one is over. <laughs> they better get used to it. As, as you said earlier, Patrick White promised 50 points per outing. Well, he's that, lived so. up to it in game one. Yeah. First career touchdown for the freshman from North Fort Myers, Florida, Noel Devine, much highly heralded running back, along with Jock Sanders. They'll be groomed by Rich Rodriguez and this Mountaineer offense obviously is as you look to the future and, uh, Renee is going to be pretty good. Of course okay. you've still got the other two guys who have another year of eligibility left. We're exactly. talking about White and Slate. And Slate. Yeah well I think that would be the first of many for Noel Devine and second most points in the Rich Rodriguez regime. Brandon West is deep. The kick is short but it will bounce through. And West will field this one at the five. Stacked up and finally pushed out of bounds. Runs out of bounds at the 27 yard line. The ball be spotted at the 27. Pat Lazier, another of the true freshmen for the men from Morgantown, made the tackle on the play on special teams. So at the 27, it'll be first down and 10. West and kind of walking off, uh, might have a hit pointer. That was a, quite a collision on that kickoff return. Sure was. Well, he has taken some blows in this game this afternoon. He's tough, 169 pounds, and he has not, uh, he's not giving up anything. He's, he's given it his all, and uh, he's had a pretty good afternoon. Peregrine and Thompson are in the backfield. Peregrine looks, throws, but the receiver was not looking. The pass is incomplete. It was intended for Glennis Thompson, but it was by him by the time he turned around. So it'll be second down. 
Stops the clock. We still have a minute and 14 seconds to go. A little pressure from Marcus Broxy. Another out of Tampa, Florida. Richard freshman, good speed rusher, 6'4", 245. And he'll be another in those. Uh, look at Owen Schmidt with that pair of style. Thompson with the ball. He's going to get a couple, maybe one on the play. Allen was there. Franchon Allen was there to make the tackle. So it'll be third down coming up. is almost intercepted. Zach Cooper was looking to the end zone that time and just dropped the ball. He was anticipating a celebration. Just a sophomore, 6'3", 225, but boy, he stepped, he read that and stepped right in front of the lane and that ball was his. He'll, he'll remember that next time. And it was intended for Nunez and actually it was, should have been gone into the end zone. He's a tough guy, you know, bounce back, tough physical and Good physical specimen at 6'3", 225. Fourth down, they'll have to kick. And Laney's done a good job in kicking. They'll have a new returner. Jock Sanders is going to be deep for the Mountaineers. He'll field it at the 20. Starts one way, tries to get outside, does. Dances back, a little room, 40, 43 yard line. And a flag comes in late. Sanders on the return. A late flag. 51 yard punt to 23 yard return by Sanders. And we'll check out the laundry. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face pass. Face 38 on the kicking team. 15 yard 15 penalty. 15 yard, the that's the, the big one. I think they've had First three down. of those face mask penalties this afternoon. Yeah, they have. And again, that's been very costly. Of course, the score has just made the situation worse. Uh, more of an uphill battle, but uh, you know the thing about Jock Sanders, you got to like why he fits this offense so well, John, is that he played wide receiver and tailback, so he fits so smoothly into this spread option offense because they slot him out so much. He has to be a good receiver, so he's very acclimated to the position he's playing here. 22 seconds remaining on the afternoon. Well, Renee and I have had a good time here in Morgantown. They're great hosts. Oh, the weather's man. been perfect. And we were treated to what we thought would be and was a spectacular offensive show. Come away with this trip. It's very, very happy. It's been a great experience. And they'll go into the take a knee offense right here with Jarrett Brown running it. And Jarrett has played the entire fourth quarter. He scored a touchdown. And he will go down. And that will do it. Big, big win for West Virginia. The number three seeded, number three ranked team in the country. Rolls 62 to 24 over the Broncos of Western Michigan. Quick handshake between the head coaches. And Rich Rodriguez has his second most productive offensive game of his seven year regime in Morgantown. So I'm sure he's going to be pretty happy. And he should shake the hand to that number 27 because Jamarco Timmons did a terrific job for. Western Michigan. We've got more to talk about. We'll be back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown with more on a 